Hello. Thanks for stopping by today. How's it going? <laughs> Golden Kappa check in chat, please. Golden Kappa check. Audio is a bit delayed. Are you f are you are you fucking serious? I timed all that shit. I swear to God, if this audio is delayed, I'm gonna be pissed. I literally got it synced within a millisecond. One second delay? How? How is that possible? <sighs> I did think the delay seemed a bit high today. I wonder if it got its shit together. Ah, oh, son of a bitch. Fuck. Mouth moving, sound coming later? I've got... Seriously? Let me see if I fuck something up. I've got a three second delay on this piece of shit camera. Actually, the camera's fine. It's the capture card that sucks. Um, is my other capture card here yet? Five, 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 five. That's 3,372 milliseconds of delay. Pretty huge delay? Are you fucking... Really? How? How is the delay that big? Maybe, I, maybe, I, maybe, maybe. Let me check if my capture card is here. Because if it is, that solves all the problems. Because this is some shit. Never buy one of these things. You can't see it because it's out of frame. Never buy an Elgato Game Capture HD USB based thing. This fucking piece of shit has like a four second delay and it's plus minus 800 millis of variance. It's so goddamn hard to get right. I literally tuned it an hour ago on this exact same OBS session and it's still not good enough. God damn it. It shipped, it shipped, but is it here? Um. Mm-hmm. Mm, searching. Searching. No, it's not here yet. Shit. Um. You fucking... I don't know how I... Oh, it looks like I lost some frames due to rendering lag. Let me try this. Is it now in sync? Is it now in sync? <laughs> Fuck! Um... I don't actually know how I will sync this while I'm streaming. I don't have a great way of doing that. So what's coming first, the video or the sound? Are you fucking serious right now? Sound is coming first. The video's coming first. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Video first. Okay, so the video needs to be delayed. Well, now we now we get to do this together, guys. This is a bonding. This is why we have the candle. This is a romantic date night where we get our AV syncs correct. Um, so we're gonna just add in. Uh, we're gonna set that to 500. I'm gonna add in like uh, 600 millis of extra delay right now. I guess, wait a minute. 
Wait a minute. I think that delay was actually good on that. I I might have made a mistake. I might have synced. No. Um. 372 millis. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna try this. We're gonna see. Um. Yeah, you fuckers think I haven't already done this shit today? <sighs> the things I do for you, chat. The things I do for you. God, that's bad. What the fuck? What the fuck? How? How is it off by that much already? Wait, I didn't see which one came first. Camera's going before the screen. So the camera's ahead. For this. Okay. And that lines up with what you fucks are saying. So then I'm going to screen capture this such that I can see the delay, the delta, uh, it looks like it is 15 minus 2 frames, so 13 frames, so 434 millis. Okay, so this, the camera is ahead, so I need to decrease the delay. That makes more sense because the delay seems so massive. Um, so, 434 millis less, 372 on that, 62, 500. I have to do some weird math here. So we delete that delay and we modify this delay to 438. And now, hopefully, these things are relatively in sync. Um, okay, here we go. The audio has not been synced. I haven't done that yet. Okay. I haven't done this live. Typically, I've been doing this offline. Uh, looks like we're off by two frames. It looks like the video is now two frames ahead. So we need another 60 millis pulled out of there. And this lines up to the numbers I was using yesterday. So we're going to go to four, uh, 370 on that. And then that's 2,500 plus 370, 2870 delay. And then I'm going to apply a 2870 delay to everything else. Okay. And then we're going to look at this again. I'm going to pause it. Look at this. I'm going to hit go. I'm going to make sure they start at the same time. And they do. And then I'm going to see how close we are. And uh, we're within two frames there. So now, hopefully, that should be better, right? It is? I literally tuned it before. <laughs> it's off by like two or three frames, but it's, it's a lot harder when I can't do a recording. 
Because when I can do a recording, I can kind of, uh, I can look at the uh, audio samples and actually go from that perspective. And I know you can't hear me anyways. Okay. Close enough? Is, is it like, is it good? Is it like within, does it feel within two frames? I think it's probably off by like four frames. I think the video is off by like two frames and then the recording in the audio of that HDMI off that camera is like another two frames that I compensate for. Feels perfect? Okay, it's good. All right. <laughs> welcome, welcome to a shitty capture card. This is why, this is literally the only reason I bought another capture card, so we don't have to do shit like that, because that takes a lot of effort. Is that a Woodwick candle? Yes, it is. This is a Woodwick wood smoke, fresh out of the fireplace. Is this your home or your workplace? This is my home. It's good. Having more than two monitors with only two eyes. Your eyes can only see two monitors per second. <laughs> nah, it's pretty good. It ain't bad. I like this setup. Are you supposed to go in the office? You think I would ever go into the office? Hell no. But we also got this. See? It ain't bad. <laughs> Any dear friends come by? Not today. Not today. Evening bonfire is my favorite. I'll order that quick then. I this is this candle is almost out. Hell yeah. <laughs> Many screens. Oh yeah, I can go to this view. We're not doing anything right now, are we? I'm just ordering candles off Amazon, I guess. <laughs> while, we, uh, while we let chat ask questions and hang out for a bit, we'll kind of warm up here with some chatting. How's everyone doing? Fix light? Fix light. Angle that down just a tad. You just want the feet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know where the focus is at. I can't remotely do the focus. The camera's too far away. Hopefully that's good enough. <laughs> now, Homsek, thank you so much for the raid. Hell yeah. How is your stream? What were you up to today? You're always doing some weird, fancy web things that I don't understand. <laughs> Every, everything's got like a URL and text and I don't know. If the data comes from outside the computer, I have no idea what it does. Ah, rude, hell yeah. We got some Naham emotes in, in, in chat. He has custom emotes, right? You definitely have custom emotes. How many monitors do you have? Uh, six, nine in this setup. Uh, but this setup is kind of ass. This is my like gaming setup. And this has a proper stand. This one does not, and it's a pain in the ass. Um, your stream is way over my head. Ah, oh, that's fine. I don't even know what I'm doing on my stream most of the time. First American I see drinking whiskey in a proper glass? A Glen Carn, Glen Kyr, Glen Corn glass? Uh, absolutely fantastic. It actually makes a significant difference. And I'm not a snooty person, and I notice a difference. This guy is a real hacker. Yeah, this is what hacking looks like. Hanging out in the outdoors, writing some code. 
Damn, dude, why do you need so many monitors? Well, these are two completely different uh, computers. So, um, this, like, to me, I have a three-monitor computer and a six-monitor computer. I don't have a nine-monitor computer. So, can you link the nine-monitor arm? I actually just looked it up the other day, and it is no longer available. So, it's not, uh, it's not a thing you can get anymore. But, yeah. Um, hell yeah. I think the company still makes stuff. They didn't have, like, maybe they have a new model number. Ergotech? It looks like it says Ergotech. Ergotech? Ergonomic Tech? Yeah, Ergotech? It's a really nice stand. I think I paid, like, 400 for it, but it's very, very, very sturdy. Um as it wiggles around, but it's, it's pretty damn good. It also doesn't like drill into the desk. It's just a nice low profile flat base. Are they 24 inch monitors? I don't know, I'd have to measure them. They're probably 23s or 24s. Um, <laughs> is it the same shit on all screens? Nah, I just have like a bunch of code open. I pretty easily can fill up all the screens. like documentation, another page of documentation. I realize I'm not looking at all at the camera while I'm saying all of this. I'm a terrible, terrible camera person. Um, but yeah, I basically will always have like two things of documentation open. I'll have one for the target, one for a different page of the PDF that I want to reference to at the same time, one for like Rust documentation, and it's pretty easy to fill up four monitors with code. Like, Two monitors of code I'm auditing, two monitors of code I'm writing, and there I'm at six. And at that point, if I want to open anything else, I have to start using, like, windows or tabs or minimization, which is just really weird to me. So, <laughs> Tomcast, thank you so much for the Twitch Prime. I'm glad we're just chilling and hanging out. This is actually kind of fun right now. Um, we're going to get into some cool technical stuff shortly, but... Um, as long as chat's chatting things up, I might as well hang out and visit a bit. I don't think I've really done face cams much. This is the most badass setup ever. You hacking the Gibson? Hell yeah! We're straight into that Gibson. We're crawling through those file systems that we visualized in 3D for the extra hackings. Um, can you do a tutorial on how to do this? Please set all this up? I mean, just set things on stands. Like, that's it. Just put things on stands. Um, let's see. Fuzzing needs more monitors. Exactly. <laughs> this is what you do after you've had the Gibson. Yeah, this is the hat. Oh, yeah. 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 Let me get my flex on. I know since I'm doing a face cam, I have to flex. So. No comment. No comment. Just uh, gonna put this one out here for all y'all showing up. Just, uh, I got one of these. <laughs> Kid, I don't really give too much of a shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm proud, but I know you can't hear me either. <laughs> the pony award, hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's a pony award. Are we spoiling his date night? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> is that my favorite pony? Yes, it is. That's what the pony awards are. It's literally a spray-painted My Little Pony. <laughs> Flex in that golden pony. Oh, man. Are we spoiling his date night? We are his date night. See? Exactly. We're here. We got a candle. We got some whiskey that hit my tooth in the wrong way. I definitely have a cavity I need to get figured out. That camera is definitely out of focus. Wait, maybe it's not. That might just be my Twitch. No, it's out of focus. <laughs> Let me, uh... Alright, is that in focus now? Yeah, it is. 
It's like kind of a pain in the ass to focus that uh, when it, when the camera is that far away. Um. <laughs> Distant, I know you can't hear me, is have been a highlight of the stream. Shit. All the things that I've been doing off stream, you've been able to hear. How much you spend on electricity? Uh, electricity is really cheap here. Um, I spend like 12 cents. Oh, oh, it's tiered. I spend like 8, then 10, then 12 cents per kilowatt hour. I spend maybe 250 bucks a month on power. Um... What Linux do you hack with? Working? I use Gentoo, like a like a champ. <laughs> For some reason, I switched to Gentoo. Next setup will uh, also have twelve webcams, and I know the white balance is off, but it's on auto white balance, and it's just gonna get confused because it's sunny out. Well, it's not sunny out, but the sun is there. Um, you should be a comedian. Am I really that entertaining? God, I hope I'm not that entertaining. I feel like that's an insult to comedians. <laughs> I'll do my stand-up routine. What do you call two Android phones that walk into a room? I don't know. <laughs> I, I had nothing planned there. I tried and I found nothing. <laughs> I, I was going to do something related to bugs. I'm like, it's two layers. Too many layers indirected. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, chat. You guys are super fun tonight. Oh, wow. Uh, inferior to an iPhone? Oof. Oof. Are we starting the iPhone versus Android party? I think the real answer is just get both. <laughs> just get both. And But if you get both... You can either think you're really cool by having both and being like, I'm an Android person, I'm an iPhone person. Or you can just eternally hate yourself by being a fanboy and then hating yourself for not having, well, for having the other one. And that guarantees, it's like AMD versus Intel. I've got AMD servers and Intel servers. And that means, according to fanboyism, I am awful regardless. <laughs> Old school Nokia, greater than Android, greater than iPhone. Oh yeah, for sure. Get one of those old phones. Um, write an iPhone exploit next stream. Uh, we gotta make Stefan Esser mad. I haven't done much iOS hacking. I have a. I have an iPod Touch, in the best color. Um. And I don't know what version this is running. This probably actually has old exploit code on it. Um, but I wrote a thing that allowed me to dump the... Actually, it's basically the same thing we're going to try to do today. Um, I wrote something that used an exploit to dump the kernel such that I could rerun the kernel in uh, QMU, uh, which is similar to what we're going to try to do today. Um... <laughs> You're funny, are you here every day? Not really, I have no schedule. We just kind of YOLO do things here. Today we're having a romantic day with chat. Uh, we've got a candle out. Um, and I've got some uh, colored liquid here. <laughs> I don't know what the Twitch rules are on that. I have colored liquid. <laughs> Two Android phones, a botnet. <laughs> Oh, that's pretty good. That's actually fucking great, Desu. Um, well, are you, uh, you're at the top of the winner's list. Pony Wikipedia page. Hell yeah. Flex that. Flex that muscle that is completely deteriorated since COVID started because I haven't been to the climbing gym or done any strenuous activities for the past eight months. Woo! <laughs> you live in the mountains? Yes, I do. Quelve, Quelve, sir, ladies, man. See, I can pronounce that as about as well as I can uh, get along with the ladies. That's actually not true. I, I totally get along with the ladies, but I'm not really looking for uh for anything. Um, do you sync stuff between your gaming and work box? Well, the work box is offline. That has no access to the internet. Um, and everything that goes onto that machine is through read-only drives. So actually, there are no bits that go that way. 
Um, so that's super fun. Uh, I'd be happy if you just showed how to debug an iOS kernel in Ida. Like, actually attach a debugger? I have no idea. I have genuinely run a debugger on Android phones and iPhones, like, two or three times in my life. And I've maybe written 30 exploits. Um... The debuggers on phones just always seem so spotty and so bad. Um, <laughs> looks like you can uh, just take a run in your front yard. Hell yeah! It's wonderful. Yeah, you guys see a little bit of the mountains. I could maybe frame it a little differently. Want to try and frame it differently? Why is your workbox offline? Because uh, I work on a lot of things that I consider sensitive enough that I don't want leaking onto the internet. Um, also, I don't want like bug reports going to companies where they fix the bug before I can report it and get whatever bounty or, or thing. Um, basically, all applications ship crash reports out to the internet, and it's a pain in the ass to make sure they don't end up reporting things. Um, and if you're working on like a bug or an exploit, uh, you need all the time you can get. So, yeah. Dude, do you need more monitors? Let me see if I can frame this differently. I know you can't hear me again. JK, I know you can. Wait, there we go. We'll get more mountains in here. The power cable disconnected to the camera. Whoops. Whoops. Well, it's fine. We'll fix this. This will take two seconds. Um, will it? Will it take two seconds? That other thing might crash, but uh, why would that be saying no signal? That's just a lie. See? All right, we'll just unplug this and replug it in. This might break everything, but we'll see. Uh, one moment, please. Oh, it's gonna work. We're fine. We're fine. No? Is it working? No? Son of a bitch. I might have to kill that OBS session and restart it. I've got some weird things going on. God damn it. One moment, please. Son of a bitch. I'm telling you, man, this capture card is the absolute legend in piece of shit. <laughs> um. Okay. Bink. Bam. And now everything's probably out of sync again because we got a new keyframe. So, sucks to suck, but there you go. Sorry. <laughs> Too bad. Actually in sync? Looks fine. We did it! We survived the reboot! <laughs> Sorry, okay, let me uh, catch up on chat. Um, I guess I can make chat wider and then I can see more lines or something like that. Uh, do you have a stream or something on? Um, the buzzy thing in the background. A steamer on, the, a buzzy thing. Is it, are, are you, are you literally hearing the candle? It is the candle, hell yeah. <laughs> we'll turn that game down a bit, okay. Um, 
Which whiskey are you drinking? I, I'm not drinking any whiskey right now, but if I were to be drinking whiskey on a Saturday, I would probably be having the Belvini 14-year uh, Caribbean cask. <laughs> Gamoza ASMR. Yeah, I love the sound of these candles. They're fantastic. Um, this stream is everything I want from a stream. A hacker just talking about random shit. All right, I'm going to try and lower the camera. And hopefully this time I won't disconnect it. Okay, that should be a better, better setup. How does it smell? It smells fantastic. Um, I almost fell there. <laughs> um, are you molding because of all the exploits you've done? Are you talking about? Are you talking about this? You talking about this mane of absolute astonishing hair? You got any problems with this? With this full covering of hair that I have here? You calling this molding? You bitch. <laughs> this looks like a super villain's lair. It is. What game is in the background? Tibia. <laughs> You playing any CTS? Not in the past uh, decade or so. I guess past like six years. I, I did one a while ago. Asmund bald man mad. Woo! An Asmund gold reference in my Twitch chat? This is for serious computing and technology here. We don't do gaming here. Gaming is bad. <laughs> Tibia! <laughs> Woo! It's an absurd number of monitors, hell yeah. What targets are you currently working on? I can't really tell you what I'm currently working on. No gaming, Kappa. DeathZDV with the three little parents. Is that, is that the, like, Russian thing? I don't know if that's a Russian... I, I know that, like, using the parents like that is a thing... In Russia, I don't know if other countries also do that for smileys. Um, let's see. I guess if we want to go hack, we can go hack. I can make that work. What happened to the sock head strap? I got better headphones. Well, actually, the other headphones are nicer, but... <laughs> da! Talk and ectib. I agree. <laughs> I got the da right, yes. And then the talk in ektaba is probably not very um, correct pronunciation. <laughs> Let's rush B. Will you do some more Maple Story poning? I actually was working on some Maple Story recently. Um, unfortunately, I can't do it on Twitch. Um, now, I was wondering if I did custom client development for a MapleStory private server, if that would be acceptable on Twitch. Um, all those Vim instances make me happy, hell yeah. The bomb has been planted. <laughs> all right. I think date time is over. It's now time to do the hackins. Which sucks, because I feel like more people enjoy just hanging out here than the actual Hackens. <laughs> um, let's see. Just set up a private RTMP server for those uh, streams or something? Oh, yeah, and I have my wallet in my pocket. I don't like that. It's uncomfortable. I'll throw it across the room and then forget where it was. Whoops. Professional broadcaster. Torubaka, thank you so much for the seven months of the Twitch one. Doing things because I have a face cam. And that's what streamers do. And we're a streamer now. Uh, John Pollock, thank you so much for the two months. Hell yeah. <laughs> hey, Gamoza, what exactly is the difference between the system group and the root group on Android? 
Uh, can I get root, root easily if I exploit a sys device slash actal? Not necessarily. So system on Android typically is a relatively high privileged world, um, but you'll typically need another exploit to get execution from there. I don't think you can directly load modules and have full control over the system, but you have access to so many things that I'm pretty sure you can convince things to just do the wrong things for you. And I'm pretty sure as sy system you can just like read all of the things on the file system that you need anyways, so it doesn't really matter. We got a hype train incoming with cash override coming in with the two months. Hell yeah, boop. <laughs> Quake 3 is rewritten in Rust. In fact, converted to Rust code via automation. Oh, interesting. Scam train, hell yeah. So I need to figure out what, what angle I want to get on this camera for when I'm actually streaming. Maybe like here? Yeah? How's that? Is that better? I want to... I want like a stick so I can focus my camera. I don't know if it's focused or not. So what I'm gonna do is put my face here, which is roughly where I would be. I'm then gonna take my hand, I'm gonna put my hand there, and then I'm going to uh, focus on my hand. <laughs> okay, whatever makes the tibia screen visible. I'll probably, this machine will probably get AFK'd out of. I'll probably end up uh, basically forgetting that that is up and it will uh, time out and go, and go disappearing. Go disappearing. It will go blank. Meep Zor, meep, meep, meep. With the tier one sub, hell yeah. First time viewer. Thank you so much, first time sub. Thank you so much. Desu given a gifted sub to Nevznerj. <laughs> Thank you so much for that. Grinsver Grinsvin? Is that is it Grinsvin? But for Buster with the three months, holy shit, we actually have a hype train going. This is fucking insane. Um <laughs> I thought you were gonna smack us. I wouldn't do that to you. Chat, you guys are so nice. You only yell at me sometimes. Um, it was a random, oh shit. <laughs> well, it worked out. <laughs> What's the oscilloscope for? Um, trying to find my hopes and dreams in very high frequency wires. No, I, I kind of use it for random stuff. I actually bought that oscilloscope when I was in high school, and it's definitely due for an upgrade. Um, Gamozo has that mega groom beard. Oh, my God. I did, I did put beard oil in it for the first time in, like, eight months. So, because I knew, I knew you guys were going to be here. So, I had to, I had to make everything look good. Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, I actually haven't, I, I wrote some software for the oscilloscope recently that allows me to, like, log and do live captures off of it, which is really cool. Um, but yeah, let's see here. I mean, of course, it's because you're the best Kappa. Oof. Oof. At least that's what the RNG says. Hell yeah. Sick view? Hell yeah, it is. It's fantastic here. All right. Um, try uh, a Zonenberg's GL scope client. That sounds interesting, but I mainly wanted it for automation. So the tool that I wrote allows for like automation of uh, capturing and, and doing everything so I can like run a long test overnight, especially if I have like really obscure signals. Holy setup, oh my God, those Redmond views, bro. Hell yeah, it's fantastic here. What state are you in? I'm in Washington. Does more monitors make you a better hacker? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> more monitors equals more HPM. Hacks per minute. <laughs> Any neighbors live around you? Yeah, a couple thousand feet to each way. Actually, probably a couple hundred feet. Um, did you go to school or anything or just learn everything on your own? I just learned everything on my own. I was too lazy to do school. Not really my cup of tea. 
What do you think about Intel removing transactional memory instructions? It's going to make it a lot harder for me to write my CPU exploits. Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, chat, you guys are fun today. Um, I think you need four more monitors. I'm planning on turning this gaming computer into a six monitor setup, which would technically add three. M1 chips thoughts? I don't give a shit. Um, <laughs> are those six monitors uh, just for monitoring your server act? Yeah, each monitor for each server. Uh, not actually. <laughs> um... Are all monitors the same refresh rate? No, unfortunately. This one's a 144. This is a 4K, uh, 60, everything. Well, everything is 60, except this is a 144. Um, XJAM do add into the hype train. Uh, Twitch, Twitch is saying more hype or something. Uh, thank you so much uh, for that. Hell yeah, I'm glad you're enjoying the content. We're just chilling today. When I saw all these monitors, uh, I knew this guy who had some uh, real mean skills. Or when I saw all these monitors, yeah, I mean, we're gonna be we'll be hacker typing away. Let me let me get. Uh, can you see this monitor? I think you can. Hacker typer, Hi hacker typer. Okay, so today we're gonna be getting into the mainframe, uh, and to do that, we're just gonna simply go into here and uh, let me just see here. Um, okay, so we're really close to the mainframe here. And, okay, and I'm in. Bam. Got it. Your opinion on Zen 3? I think Zen 3 is more and more promising. AMD is absolutely fucking slaying it with the processors right now. Why no ultra-wide monitor? It makes it harder to manage windows on a monitor. Um, I, I prefer many small monitors because I get kind of native window management, uh, which kind of works out better for my workflow. Congrats hacking NASA. Yeah, we're into NASA. <laughs> Snowden's got nothing on us. We're into NASA too now. <laughs> uh, why do you use DuckDuckGo? Because it's uh, a good default and it's uh, got shittier results, so it makes me have to think more and use my brain. <laughs> Six monitors behind how many GPUs? One. One GPU for tw from 2012. Does the, does the trick. <laughs> what the fuck kind of setup is this? It's a hacking setup. We got a circle desk. Your audio... Uh, oh, I'm, and I'm clipping. Sorry, I'm clipping. My bad. I had it set up for being further away from the mic, and now that I'm into natural habitats, uh, I was clipping pretty bad. I, I apologize for that. Thank you for letting me know. Um, and thank you for letting me know in a kind way. That's one of the most important things. Uh... Huh. Y'all motherfuckers just didn't even know NASA 2 existed, and he's already hackered it. Yup. See, it was that easy. See, let me just keep typing here so I can pretend that, like, I'm talking to chat, but, like, casually I'm just doing this, too. Just hacking. Um, yeah, but he has, like, 60 cores or whatever. Yeah, 60 cores is a tiny number. I don't have 60 cores. I don't think I have a single computer. Uh, technically, I have a computer from 2011 with 60 cores in it. Come on. Get up on your shit. <laughs> Um, wonder if you can accelerate fuzzing with GPUs. There's a great blog on that, and then I wrote a great response to that blog as well. Um, if you want that blog, we can go uh, check it out. Firefox. Look at this. Ready? Bam. Bam. Look at that fucking quality right there. Fuzzing with GPUs. So Trailer Bits wrote a good blog on this, which is here. You can find more information. And then I wrote a response to this blog which you can find at this thing, um, this, here, where I respond to it. Oh my god, he uses i3, <laughs> it's DWM, bitches. <laughs> juked, juked, baited, and outsmarted, chat. <laughs> Who's, who looks like a fool now? <laughs> Suckless fan? Eh. I think DDM's good, and I've been using it for a decade now. Do AMD processors have any useful tracing features for code-covered stuff? 
They have an undocumented feature that I used in Piledriver, but I don't know if Zen still has that feature. Um, they have nothing on processor trace. Uh, Intel is still a much better platform to do fuzzing on if you're doing hypervisor level things. Even though AMD's hypervisor uh, SVM is a much better interface than VTX, because VTX is an absolute heap of shit. Um, but whatever, you got what you get. That being said, um, VTX has some other features that is really nice. You have um, uh, execute non-readable memory that you can do on the EPT page tables, which is really cool. Um, does anyone know how to fix the refresh rate in DWM and X? I have two 144s, but moving floating windows around doesn't feel like 144. Yeah, that doesn't feel like 144 to me either, but um, yeah. I don't care too much. I'm not sure. I use GNOME 3. I want my UI to be as slow as possible. Have you heard of KDE? God. <laughs> awesome WM Master Race. Wow, I haven't used Awesome for... God, I used Awesome when I was like a wee little nubbin. Uh, that was one of the first tiling window managers I used. I think there's videos of me when I'm a kiddo using that shit. Let me, let me see if I can find that. Look at this, look at this right here. Bam! Um, I think I used awesome in these. This looks like awesome. So what's great about the old videos that I have on YouTube is I was basically always shirtless. Yeah, that looks like awesome right there. Um, It looks like I'm wearing a shirt in this one, which is very strange. But, uh, yeah, this is the wonderful video we're watching here. I have reached a level two hype train emote. There you go. Choo choo. <laughs> I have some fun old videos up there. Oh, man. Um, are you an HTML hacker? I'm not. I don't do any web hacking stuff. I don't understand how that works. Um... Uh, thank you for writing a blog post nitpicking Trail of Bits. Needling them makes me happy. Why is that? I like Trail of Bits. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big fan of a lot of their work and a lot of their people. Writing Assembly in 2009? Hell yeah! Was that 2009? When was that? That video was 2009. Yeah. <laughs> See? <laughs> I've been doing... Holy shit, I've been doing this for a while. Maybe it's time to move to a new industry. You got hacked all your screen once black. Yeah, that was the that was the GRU getting in. Um I got the hype train emote element blocked. Oh no, rip. Uh these emotes don't work for some reason. Aw. Based on voice I expected, kid. Not bearded Krona. <laughs> Fuck you! I'm an adult! I just refied! my house to a 15 year to get a better interest rate. That's adulting right there. Damn it. Time to begin ASMR scene. Okay, chat. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to get into the mainframe. And to get into the mainframe, uh, basically uh, the mainframe is where all of the secrets are held. And we're gonna go into the mainframe by uh, looking at uh, some of the code that we can find on this Android device. So the first thing that we want to do to get into the mainframe is uh, we're gonna go into this uh, other scene here and I'm gonna go into my Android folder and we're gonna go into the Motorola folder and uh, we're gonna go into this Thrower folder, which is the name of this exploit that we wrote. We called it Thrower, mainly because it wasn't going to actually be this, but it turned into this. Um, and then we're just gonna do make run. And we can see we're now uh, successfully in the mainframe. And that's, that's all it takes, guys. Thank you. Like, like that kind of ASMR? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, good ASMR. Oh man, mechanical keyboard ASMR. 
Thoughts on Handmade Seattle? I have no idea what that is. <laughs> I like how the beers went down as I started ASMR. <laughs> um, more clipping. Notepad.exe. Not authentic enough. Oh, man. Speaking of Android, what are your thoughts on Anbox? I don't know what that is. Please open Emacs. You get out of here, trader. Um, <laughs> I have so many damn streams. It's... it's Streams? Screens? Screams? Too many damn screams? Um, don't forget to scratch your beard against the microphone. <laughs> oh my god, I need to not slouch in my chair because that's gonna make me look short and I'm tall. <laughs> Let me, yeah, there we go, yeah, tall, tall people here, uh, sorry, god, what's it, what's it like to just have my feet go through the floor, it's crazy, I'm sitting in my chair and my feet are definitely not dangling right now, um, do you use that macro mouse even, yes, I do, I use it for, uh, healing the shit out of people in WoW and being a, a top, a top WoW healer, um, how did you get into this stuff from such a young age? I had a really stupid idea of what was cool. And look, now 300 other idiots think it's cool too, so... Ha ha ha! Duped! <laughs> no, I don't know. It's just always fascinating to me to figure out how things work. So I just kept going uh, lower and lower level. So... How long are you? I'm I'm about uh, seven foot five. Um, the camera it's a weird lens. Um, it's the same ones NASA uses to make the Earth look round, but it makes me look shorter. But I'm actually really tall. Um, <laughs> what whiskey are you drinking? Um, I'm drinking a random liquid that happened to be in this glass that potentially is a Belvini 14 year uh, Caribbean cask. Um, is that in, what's that in real units? Do the conversion yourself, you commie. <laughs> Siri, dear, hello, what is seven foot five inches in centimeters? I don't actually have one, but someone's probably triggered. Um... Indie conference for low-level developers. You'd be great on there. What is this? Uh, so, Anbox is an emulator for Linux. Okay, that sounds way too sophisticated. I've never used Android in an emulator. Um, wait, NASA is scamming us and it's truly a flat... Are you telling me you think that's round out there? Do you think there's any evidence for that? I'll have you know... With a large enough matrix, I can transform that world into a round world. But it's actually flat. Uh, <laughs> Android emulators are shit because you're emulating ARM on x86. Yeah, sadly, it's not vectorized emulation. Handmade Seattle. Oh, it's the, that's the conference thing. Indie conference for low-level programmers. Like, are you saying this is for cool people? Um... This looks kind of cool. November 15th through 20, it's online. I, see, I'm not going to do any online conferences because online conferences are focused around talks. And when I go to conferences, I am there to flirt with cuties and make some friends. <laughs> no, I pretty much only socialize at conferences. So uh, it's pretty much useless for me to go to an online conference. What's LPEs and RCEs? LPEs is a local privilege escalation, which gets you higher privileges on a system. So think about going from a user account to an admin account or root. And RCE is remote code execution. That basically is what you would use to get control of someone's computer without physically being at it. Uh, same, I'm super missing the conferences. Yeah, I'm dying, man. I'm missing out on so much human contact right now. It's, it's been a while. Handmade Seattle is usually offline. This is just because of COVID. Yeah, yeah, I assume that. Um, well, Anbox tries to avoid that, uh, and the Android x86 project uh, also tries to move Android to x86 instead of emulating it. Yeah, I've tried that before. Um, 
honestly, it works okay. Like, I'm, I'm not saying Inbox, uh, Android x86. It, it works okay. Come to Offensive Con? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll head out there. That was the plan this year, was to go to Offensive Con, and uh, basically, I was going to rent a supercar and drive around Europe for six months. Um, or not six months, uh, like six weeks, a month. Um, and then it didn't happen, so, because COVID. Have you ever checked out the Jeb decompiler? I have. Uh, it's pretty good for Android RE-ing, um, and the name is our Rot1 of Ida. Oh, I didn't know that. Um, yeah, I don't do too much Android, like, Java reversing. Um, I don't know if that's a uh, Java decompiler. I'm guessing it is. Uh, actually, no, it's, um... God damn it. It's been a while. I'm trying to remember if that's Java or not. Or if that's for C. I think it was Java. It's the best decompiler for Dalvik native ARM debugging. Okay, I see. All right, so let's go. And um, yeah, how's everyone doing? Tell me about your day. We'll go into this scene. And then hopefully our camera's not too in the way. But it probably will be. But whatever, we're, we're, we're hacking. We're hacking. We're, we're going to make me a bigger emphasis on this stream because apparently it fucking works because more people showed up for some reason. Um, <laughs> I have no idea why. That's weird. Why are you encouraging me to have a webcam on? You Do you realize I had to shower today and put on clothes? That is some bullshit. Um, do you always use QMU to load in the kernel? I use pretty much anything. I typically run my own... Um, I pretty much only use my own emulators. We're going to use QMU today, so it's more accessible to the plebs here on stream. Um, but yeah, let's talk about what we want to do here. Uh, what headphones are they? They look comfy. These are um, uh, Bear Dynamics uh, DT990 Pros. Uh, these are the 250 ohms, which you basically need an amp to use. Um, but they are fantastic. They are probably the most comfortable headphone you can have. They're also open ear. They have a 770 Pros, which are closed ear. I also have two pairs of those. Um, but for when I'm at home alone um, and sad, uh, I like to have open ears so I can listen to the existential crisis coming into my brain. Um... These are really nice headphones, and they're really cheap, too. So, I mean, depends on what your definition of cheap is, but, like, I'm used to having, like, $500 pairs of headphones. These are, like, $150. You can't really beat it, to be honest. Um, all right, so what we're going to do is we're going to uh, take a squiz at, uh, basically, the phone that we exploited. So... Uh, I did a summary yesterday, a short two-hour stream yesterday, where I kind of went through some of the things uh, and how we actually exploited this device, which you can't see. And honestly, I'm just going to keep the face cam because seeing the device panic uh, isn't really going to mean anything today because we're not going to be panicking this device because we cannot write bugs because uh, we're writing in Rust. So uh, nothing will crash today and the phone will never reboot um, because we're perfect developers. Um, this guy is crazy. Love him already. I love you too. Uh, Dorlek, do, do, dual, duar, du, duarlek, du, d yes, dual, dualarlek. No, duar, dual arrek, or dualer ek. I don't know. <laughs> What model headphones? Uh, DT seven, uh, DT nine nineties. Um, when you try Sound Magic HP one thousand, you'll never want any other cans. I have Hyphenman HE five hundreds, and those are absolutely fantastic. Um, they're just so even. They're so clean. Um, but honestly, I listen to my shitty speakers most of the time that I'm at my computer, anyways. So. I'm not super picky. When I lived in an apartment, I didn't have speakers. I only used uh, headphones. So I was kind of a, a, a can head at the time. I know can head's not really a term. I just made that up to sound like I'm in the scene, but I'm not. Um, is there a third monitor we're not seeing? Yes, the one where you are. The, the place where I'm doing my admin-y things and I can ban people uh, for being weirdos. 
Um, makes it make a Discord server. You think we don't already have a Discord server? Come on, Strix. Come on, Strix. You should know better than that. Um, he's got a big house to himself. Dude is rich AF. I mean, I live in a, a cheap area where I can have land. On a side note, is not wearing pants. You don't know that. <laughs> Weirdos out. It sucks that I have a four second extra delay with chat. It makes it harder to get this tight integration loop that we typically have where we get to bond and have a nice emotional, energetic, passionate experience. Um, and unfortunately, um, I actually forgot where I was going with that. Did he say X split? No, I'm, I'm using OBS here. Um, yeah, I, I can't afford X split. Are you kidding me? That's expensive as shit. <laughs> Eight monitors using two. Yep. Oh, yeah, I should be hacker typing. We've already bonded. Remember the candle? Aw. Aw. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, so we wrote an exploit for Android the other day for this old Android 2.2 device. This is a Motorola Electrify, which is one of the first phones that I had. It was actually the first Android phone that I had on the carrier. It's a relatively niche, obscure device. Uh, it's not the Electrify M. It is the original Electrify here. Um... It's an old shitty phone that I have. It has a, yeah, okay, whatever. It's an old phone. So what we did is we downloaded the source to it, the kernel source, and we extracted the kernel source, and then we basically ADB shelled into the device where we looked around and we found uh, that there was this NBOSS device that looked interesting because all users on the system could access it because it's read-writable for all users. And then we uh, basically grepped for NVOS. We found where the code existed. And then we very quickly determined that it handles IOCTLs. And then we looked at the IOCTL handler. And then we saw that we could pass it the SEM clone where we control an arbitrary argument. We could see that then it copies that uh, argument into a kernel space where there are a couple pointers, and then it does the semaphore clone, and it uses a pointer and uh, increments a, a pointer that is controlled by user space. TLDR, we're able to arbitrarily increment any address on the system, which we have turned into an exploit that gives us root on the device. Um, since there are 300 people here, um, let me know if people want me to explain what we did. We kind of explained it yesterday. I'm pretty sure I can explain it in like 10 minutes. I'm going to hit the head quick. I will be right back. Um, let me know if you want me to explain what we actually did. We'll do like a quick 10-minute summary on that if, if so. Toilet can win. That's, uh, you got to subscri subscribe to my OnlyFans. Would be very nice to explain it. We're going to explain it then. We were just going to explain it anyways. I made the decision when I was using the restroom. Holy shit. 329 people here. That is absolutely insane. I'm so glad you guys are enjoying our random hanging out, doing some Android hacking. Let me just do this. 
so I can look at you guys, get a good look. That outfit you're wearing today looks fucking great on you. Nice job. Okay. So, what we're going to do is uh, we're going to talk through this exploit that we wrote for uh, this Android phone. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a terminal here that lines up roughly with my webcam such that I don't display anything on that area of the screen. We did it. We did it. Okay. So, um... What outfit? Hey, <laughs> I'm not judging. Uh, we're just here to see your hack and so we can steal it and then sell it to Google. You know what? I'm not going to write up this bug. So if we do ADB shell, I was not kidding when we literally went into dev. So here's a little explanation of what we did to get our arbitrary root on this uh, Motorola device. So first of all, this is an old Android device, so it's important to note before people nitpick, this is an ancient device. This is running Android, I don't know right now. I'm looking, I am looking. I think it's 2.3.5, I'm looking. It's 2.3.5, I should have trusted myself. So this phone is running ancient ass Android. So. What I'm going to do is I'm going to talk you through the exploit, and I'm also going to talk you through why you couldn't do what I'm doing on this phone in modern day. And that's really important for people who don't necessarily understand how much more difficult the hackings have gotten. They have gotten difficult, uh, which is really cool. Thanks, I like my bathrobe too. Hey, I fucking love bathrobes. Oh, camera went to sleep. But it comes right back but it comes right back, right? Right? I have like eight second delay. Yeah, it works, easy. Okay. Um, I, every 30 minutes, it's gonna time out. So, okay. How's the quality of the camera? Is this, is this good? Is this a good viewer experience? NASA 2 hacked your camera. Okay, so what we do on this device is the first thing we want to do is determine uh, things on the system that we can interact with as a user. So our goal is to get a local privilege escalation, or you might hear it called an LPE uh, in the world out there. And basically what that is, is it is a bug that will allow us to get access to a higher privileged account than what we actually have. So when we ADB shell into this device, we are running as the shell user. And we have access to graphics and input and logging and mounting and ADB and SD card and a couple things, right? You actually have quite a few uh, permissions on ADB shell, but anyways, those are the permissions we have. Now, what we want to do is we actually want to get more control. And more specifically, we want full control. And to get full control, that requires us to get on Linux what is called root. And root is effectively the administrator account. Root on Linux, and we're ignoring SE Linux and other things, so don't nitpick my shit. Um, Root is basically full access to everything on the system. Once you're root, you can load drivers, you can modify the kernel, you can run binaries, you can debug other processes, you can inject things into other address spaces, you can do kind of whatever you want. Um, so effectively, our goal is to try to find a way to get higher privileges on the system. Now, there's no way that you can just get higher privileges by existing. So to get higher privileges, we have to talk with someone who is more privileged than we are. And that could be a different process on the system. That could be something that we talk to over IPC, something we serialize a message to and give a message to maybe another broker or a process on the system. We could maybe be modifying a file on disk and having another program load that file and crashing out. Um, but also, we could talk to the kernel. The kernel is actually what's responsible for managing all of the devices and things on the system anyways. Uh, at least on this device where there's no hypervisor, the kernel is the highest level of privilege that you can have. And you can talk to the kernel in a couple different ways. You can talk to it by doing syscalls, and you can try and find bugs in the Linux kernel itself, or you can actually try to find bugs in device drivers. You can find things that are specific to a device, 
they're likely less audited pieces of code. They might have been written only for that device. So for in, in this case, this runs a chipset that they probably developed a couple drivers to handle the timers on, the graphics card on, uh, interrupts on, and they basically wrote a custom driver to do that for this phone. And it's kind of a fire and forget. Now, in that case, that means that driver is probably very unaudited. It's not something that's core to Linux or Android. And thus, the amount of people that actually have their eyes on these devices are very few. Now, our goal is to get execution on this device in any way possible. We don't care about whether or not we can do it from inside of a browser sandbox. And we don't care about if it works on many phones. We only care about this specific phone. If you care about all phones, then you're going to want to find an Android proper bug, and you're going to want to find an Android or Linux bug uh, that goes back a long enough time that you get the coverage that you want on your targets. In our case, we just want to get access to this one single phone, and that will hopefully allow us to um, basically become root, and once we're root, we can manipulate the device and debug things about the system um, that will help us develop further exploits and find further bugs. So... Effectively, that's an LP. We want to get higher privileges on the system, and to do this, we have gone with the device driver route. It is the more target specific, it's very specific to this phone, and we're not finding a generic Android bug, but what we're doing is we're hopefully cutting down the time it takes for us to write an exploit such that we can be up and running. I'm going to catch up on chat quick. Uh, Cockeyes, thank you so much for the four months of Tier 1 subbies. That is fantastic. Thank you so much for stopping by and continuing the support. That is awesome. Um, why not just type Sue? I wish. I wish. Pride LGBT. Hell yeah. Pride to you too. Uh, Kappa HD. We got a lot of Kappas coming in. Wow, stream quality leveled up. I put a fucking camera on it. <laughs> all I did. Um, Twitch is high as fuck today. Why is Twitch high as fuck today? Stream ha Next stream hacking Maple Story. I wish, man. I wish. If they let me. Okay. So, chat. Here's how it's going to work. I'm going to try to communicate for like five to ten minutes, and we're going to talk about, um, I'm just going to talk about random shit, and then I'm going to try to catch up on chat. And here's what we're going to do. Okay, everyone with me? Gamozo, you haven't read chat in fucking 30 minutes. Hello? Can we practice? Can we practice that? Because my, my chat integration is not the best. So as long as, as chat can remind me of that, we'll be good. So I'm going to go and explain the next stage. <laughs> we need a Gamozo pizza? What, what do you mean? There's no pizza signal? There is a pizza signal. Read chat, loser. <laughs> this streamer, no read chat. See, exactly. That is the behavior I want. Um, okay. <laughs> um... You haven't read yet in 20 minutes. Hello! Oh, man. What device are you working on today? We are working on a Motorola Electrify. Bam! And it's not going to be in focus. So, bam! Now it maybe is in focus. But this is a Motorola Electrify, which is running Android version 2.3.5, which you're not going to be able to read from that camera view. And it's running kernel version 2. Point, let me just guess... Um, let me recite it from memory. It is uh, 2.6.32 is the kernel version running on there, just from memory. Anyways, it's an old device, but we're using it as an example, and we're going to explain the differences to modern devices rather than struggle in finding a bug for two weeks on a modern device. <laughs> focus, you fuck! Yeah, I don't have autofocus on. It's on fixed focus right now because it, it's focused on my face, which is the most important part of this stream right now. Um, so wait, you've been using C since you were 11? Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, I've been doing shit for a while now. Um, put shoe on head to prove this isn't pre-recorded. Uh, I'll put my calculator on my head. I don't have a shoe, but there's a calculator on head. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Take that, kids. 
fucking 2008 memes. Jesus. Um, are the emotes working for you guys? None of the custom ones are working for me. Yeah, I don't know why. They're not working for others either. I... Cap was breaking too. Yeah, I wonder if Twitch is just having some issues. Um, okay. So, what we're doing is we are... Uh, well, what we did is... Um, once we got to the stage where we decided we wanted to get local privilege escalation, we started off with looking at all of the devices that were accessible from our current users. So remember, we are a shell, and we have access to various different groups. And we ultimately kind of skimmed through a lot of the code for these different devices. Um, one thing that I never talked about is that I'm skipping basically all of the Linux things. So, uh, VCSA are uh, Linux specific, um, TTYs and PTMX are Linux specific, Block is Linux specific, um, KMessage, Urandom, all these things are Linux specific. And... I don't know how to communicate that very well. Ultimately, I kind of have worked on enough of these devices that I know what things uh, just shouldn't really be audited because they either A, do almost nothing, or B, they're core Linux and they probably have better coding practices than the Samsung or Broadcom drivers that we'll be looking at. So, we're mainly looking for entry points into the kernel. We're looking for places where we can have a conversation with the kernel because, once again, if we can't talk to the kernel, then we can't talk to the sergeant. I don't know if those ranks are correct. Anyways, um, basically, if we can't talk to the kernel, um, we're not going to be able to become the kernel. So we have to communicate with it. So we picked out this NVOS device. And this NVOS device, we basically, uh, we did this for multiple devices. We didn't go directly to NVOS. Um, this was like two streams ago, if you actually want to look. And it's my stuff is up on Bang YouTube. Uh, if you want to check out prior recordings in a higher quality than what they got streamed at. So, effectively, we grep the kernel for NVOS to look for who registers this driver. And I kind of like this because I get to do this, like, cute little, like, look in above my glasses every time I look at the camera. I like this camera angle. It's pretty good. I don't know if it works as well for you guys as it does for me. But we have this NVOS device, which registers a couple different handlers. And I'm going to catch up on chat. Um, let's see. Emotes are glitched because uh, Twitch's GlitchCon event. Oh, I see. Oh, that's what people are talking about, about GlitchCon. Most underrated hacker tool, C-Tags? Oh my god, dude. I cannot live without it. Now, it depends what C-Tags you want. Are you running stock C-Tags, BSD C-Tags, exuberant C-Tags, universal C-Tags? So many options. Universal C-Tags is the best one. Um, uh, I started coding at like 12, but it took me a few years to actually do anything properly, uh, int properly interesting instead of just copying others and other script kitty kind of stuff. Yeah, that's exactly how I started out too. Um, wow, this is so fucking cool. Of course it is. We're hacking here on Twitch with 330 random people. How cool is that? Technically, I'm a viewer, so 332. Um, <laughs> let's see. More. <laughs> Why do you have, like, a billion fucking screens? Because it's, it works best for my workflow. I often am ref referencing a lot of documentation, and it's useful for me to have all these screens. It also looks cool. It's because it looks cool. Um, more screens is more skills. Exactly. More screens is more leet. Some people argue that it's leader to be able to hack on a laptop with one screen while it's sitting in your lap. That's not leet as, at all. You need an evil layer where you can sit, have glorious mountain views, and you're surrounded by monitors. That's how you know you're a hacker. And I can confirm that by doing this. Look at that hacking over there. <laughs> um... Is it not gold for you? It is for me. Yeah, my capital is golden. I don't know why your guys' aren't. Um, let's see. I've been working on a C++. Uh, I've been working on C++ project where all C tags variants failed. Yeah, it sounds about right. C tags is just ass. Yeah, because I overlo overloads and defines. Yeah, overloads, defines, and inheritance are gonna kick you in the ass. Here, a viewer for from Argentina. Hola, como esta? Do you speak Spanish there? I, I fucking hope so. Although that was that was really insensitive, but I th I think I think Argentina is Spanish. Um, 
Yeah, you guys do like La Argentina, right? Um, is it? It's Spain that has the lisp, right? I don't know. I get all this shit mixed up. But hola, cómo estás? Um, my inner programmer wants uh, wants that, but my student brain is telling the inner programmer to fuck off. I missed the first part of that, uh, Boulevard's dad. Um, that's a rich hacker versus poor hacker. I mean. Are you a hacker if you haven't stolen them bank deets, you know? Come on. Where, where, do, where do all these monitors come from if it's not from hacking into the mainframe of all of the banking systems? <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> Argentina has their own lisp. Yeah, I think one of my closest friends in uh, middle school who was uh, basically uh, someone who bounce Spanish back and forth off me was Argentinian. Um, I used to be a lot more fluent than I am now, unfortunately. I wrote my first code at like seven, typing out on a ZX Spectrum game from a magazine. Uh, so I really don't count that. I count that. That's absolutely a great introduction. Um, wow. I really missed out on that. Like, I feel like the U.S., well, first of all, I was too young. But second of all, I don't think the U.S. had as much of the, like, microcomputer craze as was popular outside the U.S. I mean, I don't know if you're actually from the U.S. or not. Um, but things like the BBC Micro and ZX Spectrum uh, were not very common here uh, in the U.S., unfortunately. Um, get that crypto hack. Bank deeds? Hell, we hacked the central banking Gibson. Yes, we have. We've played global thermonuclear war. Um, so what happened to that hot swap, you little shit? Uh, oh, so that's what happened to that hot swap. Oh, I see. Cobalt hacker confirmed. Oh, shit. Yeah, I forgot. If I want to hack into a bank, I need to learn COBOL. <laughs> Banned and raided. Knock, knock. Hello. <laughs> Hello, FBI. <laughs> um, high school was a gap in my education. Why is that? That sucks, man. Unless you mean you gapped past it and you blew past it. You went from middle school to university or primary to whatever they call it in other schools. C64 Moss was US-based, wasn't it? Yeah, it was, but it just didn't seem... I mean, once again, I wasn't alive. I was, I was dead. Um, so I don't know. But I just... Reading through, like, old, like, British computer things, they seem to talk a lot more about personal computers going back into the 70s and early 80s. Whereas in the US, things didn't really seem... They kind of skipped from the mainframe to the IBM PC. And I know there are exceptions there. Um... But yeah, let's see. Uh, I'm from the EU, and I was talking about the ZX Spectrum. I was using the ZX Spectrum in like 2006 because my dad wanted me to start soon. I'm 21 now. Holy shit, dude. Well, you definitely started young. That's fantastic. Congratulations, man. Um, I wrote COBOL in a bank for 10 months, the worst working period ever. Yeah, that sounds pretty awful. But yeah, you can make bank doing that. <laughs> no pun intended. Nice headphones. Thank you so much. I love them too. They're caressing my, my head. Um, that's how you become a true hacker with gazillion of monitors. See? Exactly. Um, all right. I'm going to get back to content. I'll be back with you uh, uh, in a bit, Jet. And yes, they are very comfy. Thank you. Okay. So... When we found this NVOS device, we were effectively looking for the string which corresponded to the file name. And we can see that there is this miscellaneous device being registered in the kernel. And that is registering these file operations. And these file operations are what will get dispatched to when the file is operated on in certain different ways. So when you open the file, open will get called. When you close the file, close will get called. When you do an ioctal to the file, ioctal will get called. Now, open and close are relatively boring to us because they're effectively going through and they're setting up state for the device. So they're registering in this private data some information that is device specific with the Linux generic file pointer. So they're just registering their own state in that file structure. So there's really nothing we care about in there. That doesn't mean there can't be bugs in open and close. I've seen them plenty of times. 
So the Ioctal is what really stands out to us as interesting. And the Octal, Ioctal is interesting because you have these arbitrary command and argument fields that you pass in. So if I uh, change the resolution on this, or I guess the font size, and I go into man Ioctal, you'll see that in user land, you do an Ioctal and you pass in an unsigned long and then further arguments. Now in the kernel, that ends up plumbing through directly, where this command and this argument are exactly what you sent to it. There is nothing filtering those arguments at all, and thus they are completely user controlled. Which, in the terms of exploitation, means that we can pass this whatever we want to. There's no restrictions on that. It's up to the driver developer to actually restrict them properly. And that's what we end up exploiting here. So the command is used in the standard way. It's used to mux the different things um, that this ioctal can do. So it's basically a, a magic number that indicates the type of function that we want to invoke, or more specifically, the it's just the command of the ioctal. So the driver gets to decide what you do, whether you do nothing, whether you return an error or success. Um, but basically, we are able to pass an arbitrary command to this ioctal, and then we're also able to pass this argument to this uh, ioctal handler. Now we can see the command is just used to kind of mux it to determine uh, which of these cases to use in this switch statement. And the one that we particularly focused on was this semaphore clone that then takes our arg. So at this point, the argument is completely user controlled. And we pass that argument into here where it's cast into a pointer in the kernel, which is a little scary, but then we see that it does envos copy in, which will safely check to make sure that it's a valid pointer and it will use the correct procedures that Linux provides to read an untrusted pointer from user space. And thus, it makes a copy of what the user space thing points to, and it copies it onto the stack in the kernel space. But unfortunately, it actually copied a structure that also contains further pointers. It has these semaphore handles, which are actually uh, semaphore record pointers. Now with that, that means that everything that L contains is controlled by us. So it nulls it out for some reason because then it just replaces it. That was really stupid. Clearly they meant to null it out afterwards. But effectively, everything that L points to, or more specifically is contained in L because it's stored on the stack and it's not a pointer, uh, is completely controlled by us from user space. So what we're looking for is we're looking to see if the developer made a mistake and uses one of those things um, without doing copy from user, which is the correct way to interface with untrusted data. And in this case, we can see that it immediately goes to increment a ref count on that pointer. And this is the primitive that we have used to write our exploit. Effectively, we are able to pass the kernel an arbitrary pointer, and the kernel will end up incrementing that pointer by one. So a 32-bit value in memory will get incremented by one in the kernel, and that allows us to corrupt anything on the system. Uh, there are some more specifics. Technically, ref count is at offset hex 14 into this structure. So when we pass in a pointer to this, we need to subtract 14 hex such that when it's re-added back in, it's the address that we wanted to corrupt. Um, obviously, we can't pass in a null pointer, and that's about it. And then it goes on to do other stuff. We're not going to care about that. Effectively, it will return back. Uh, there are some side effects here, but we're not going to go into those because they don't really matter. So ultimately, that's the bug. So the exploit that we wrote, all it's going to do is increment a specific value in the kernel to a value that we want it to be. Um, and the way that we do this is uh, we wrote all of this code in Rust, so that's really fun. Um, but this is a good time for me to read chat because we're uh, going to start looking at how we actually wrote this exploit. Okay. Um, don't you dare discobol. Oh, I'll discobol all day long. Can we introduce Gamozo, Gamozo, Gamozil, Gamozillion as a proper unit of measurement? Hell yeah. What's ioctal? It's uh, IO control. Uh, input, output control. It's kind of like arbitrary passing into the uh, kernel. Um, can't see much of the camera on the right. That's fine. That's, that's fine. That's kind of intended. Um, how do you have colored man pages? Uh, Gentoo just has them by default. It's some fancy shit. Isn't that cool? Um, let's see. 
Okay. Um. View colored man pages in Linux. Oh, it's uh, it's something that you can control. Nice. Colored as fuck now. Hell yeah. Um, you lost me at the uh L thing. Why does user space control again? Okay, let's go look at that quick. Um, CD motor Android Motorola. Um, kernel. RG and uh, vim tag envos ioctal. So basically, um, the arguments this long, this integer value, is completely controlled. And thus, when we go into the sem clone, it is completely controlled. And then this envos copy in is basically going to do a mem copy. The, the way you should interpret this is this is a safe mem copy where it will handle a user pointer. It's going to copy from p for size of L into L. So that means it is going to copy the contents of the envocephamore clone parameter structure that is pointed to by the address specified in argument into the local copy on the stack called L. So basically this is an, uh, it's a mem copy, but it's done in a way such that the address could be corrupted in user space, and that's why we don't arbitrarily get execution right here, uh, because that is being checked by the kernel to be valid uh, and all good. And um, it's a really relatively complex process how it does that, so we're not going to go into details of how it does that, but basically Linux and any operating system is going to provide a mechanism that allows you to safely access data that is passed to you from user space. Otherwise, you would literally never be able to make anything work, because because everything would uh, be untrusted. So yeah, basically that is a safe uh, mem copy there. It is not mem copy s. It's very different from that because this one is basically uh, making sure that you are. It's going to go and do these copy checks, um, and that is for uh, alpha. Um, we want to yeah. Um, Basically, this is going to be architecture specific. If I'm not mistaken, on ARM, they register in uh, an exception handler. They just do a mem copy, and then in mem copy, they check whether or not the call frame is from this copy from user, and if it is, they discard it and then have mem copy return with an error. It's a little bit hacky, but basically, it allows you to safely access addresses that were provided from you in user space. But yeah, that's how we control everything in there because it literally mem copies a structure that basically the intent of this ioctal is that user space allocates an envos uh, clone parameter structure, fills it in, and then passes that pointer to that structure to the kernel. The kernel makes a copy of the structure, and now there's a kernel version of the exact same structure. So the same data, byte for byte, including padding, because it just did a mem copy. And that's why we control everything in that structure. And then it goes and uses one of those pointers that is inside of that structure, and obviously that is a big no-no, and that causes bugs. So. What we effectively do to take advantage of this is we wrote a class called an implant or a structure or whatever you want to call it in Rust. Um, so this uh, implant here is effectively we call implant new. And this is what does the magic. This is what throws the exploit. But we also install what we called an implant, which isn't the best term for it. But we, all, we effectively install a persistent mechanism that allows us to get kernel execution reliably after this exploit has used has been used once. And the reason we do that is A, for reliability and performance. So in this case, this is a very reliable exploit, so it doesn't matter too much for reliability. But sometimes your exploits are unreliable. Sometimes they have a 90% success rate. Or if they're public bugs, typically they have like a 5 to 10% success rate. And when you have low success rates, you want to kind of set up an environment such that you can reestablish control without having to try and roll the dice again. Um, so it's kind of good practice for writing an exploit. In this case, it's kind of unnecessary, but it's necessary because it's an increment-based exploit, and thus we don't know the state that the previous exploit left it in, so we have to kind of make a way that the previous exploit can let future exploits know, don't throw this exploit again because the kernel has already been compromised. So what we do is we create this trampoline, and the trampoline is basically a jumping ground, hence trampoline, 
um, from the kernel to user space. And all we do is we allocate some read writable executable memory at a fixed address. And that means that when we increment and corrupt a pointer in a kernel, that pointer will just always point to this trampoline address. And when we restart the uh, program, we know that we can just remap at that address to get control of execution again. So basically, we're making sure that we're always getting the same address being used for this control, control structure such that we don't end up having the kernel referencing memory that doesn't exist. This, this allows us to recreate the uh, memory state that we need. Um, we then... Basically, we allocate that memory at a fixed address as rewritable executable. We then install a little bit of shell code into it, which is just some assembly, which is going to branch to a location that's specified at this location in memory. So basically, we have eight bytes of instructions. So the four bytes following those eight bytes is an address of the function that we want to jump to. And this allows us to change this address out in user space to allow the address in the kernel to stay the same while this address can change and it will change where the kernel returns execution to. So this gives us control at a different defined point in user space. So we make that trampoline, we then update the trampoline by setting that pointer, those 8 to 12 bytes. Uh, we set that uh, pointer with this install check, which is just going to return 0. By default, the thing that we're overwriting is null in the kernel, so it is a 0 in memory. And we're replacing it with a pointer to this kernel trampoline, or uh, I think we call it kernel trampoline. Um, but basically, we're replacing that with a pointer to that location. Um, and thus... By default, if it is null, that means the kernel will return that that function is not present, and that will return an error code. So what we do is we install something that returns no error, returns zero, which is success, and that will indicate whether or not we've actually influenced execution, whether we have installed and registered a handler for something that previously would return an error. And that's all we do. So we basically... Um, we open the NVOS device, which is going to open our communication with that device that we're exploiting. And then we're going to call fsync. And fsync is the name, or, sorry, this is going to happen every once in a while. Just got to remind me. Um, so fsync is the, um, fsync is the, function handler that we replace in the kernel. This isn't how you write all exploits. This is specific to this exploit that we decided to attack the fsync dispatch uh, function. But basically, we call fsync, which if this phone has been exploited, um, would cause this install check to execute because that is what we updated our trampoline to point to. But if the exploit has not been thrown on the system, then it will not be installed, and thus, we will actually go and try to run the exploit. Um, so this is basically checking whether or not the exploit has already been thrown on the device. And what we can do is ADB shell, and I'm going to reboot this device quick. Um, I need to be re to reboot it, uh, so we can just go... Uh, ADB reboot will work fine. So I'm going to reboot that phone to basically reset it back to its original state such that we can show what it's like when we actually throw the exploit for the first time because this phone is uh, currently exploited. And ADB reboot didn't seem to be working. It just actually took effect when I control seed it. So if the implant is not installed, then we're going to attempt to install the implant. And to do this, we are going to throw our exploit multiple times, and we're going to throw it kernel trampoline address times. Now, if you remember, the primitive that we have in the kernel, the exploit that we have, is we are able to increment a 32-bit value in anywhere on the device by one. But we actually want to change a value from null into a pointer. And to do that, what we can do is just increment a value by the pointer. Right? And that's what we do. So we have this, um, we have a for loop where we're going to throw our increment exploit 18, uh, 180 hex thousand times, like a million times or whatever that number comes out to be. I think 1.5 million times. So we're going to invoke our exploit 1.5 million times to cause that address to uh, be present at um, this NVOS FOPS plus 3C. Now, if we pop over into, I think we have Ghidra open, 
if we pop into Ghidra and we go into this address, uh, we'll find that this address points to the um, NVOS file operations uh, structure in memory. So this is actually, if we look at uh, this code, uh, this is NVOS uh, FOPS, or tag NVOS FOPS. So basically, this is the file operations structure. And we can see that they initialize a couple fields. They set an owner, they handle open and release, they handle unlock dioctal, and they handle mmap. But everything else they don't handle, and thus they are zero or null. And what that means is that we can look at in memory how this looks. We can see that there's an ioctal registered, an nmap uh, registered, an nvos open registered, and we also have this nvos close. And then somewhere in here we have the I, owner, I guess, which um, might be null in this case. Um, anyways, so this structure exists at that address. We know the address this exists at. There's no ASLR, which is something that randomizes where things exist in memory, so we don't have to worry about that. And what we do is we add 3C to this. So if we were to take this address, uh, which is in my clipboard, and add 3C to it, we'll find that we are going to try to increment this value, this fsync value. Now, fsync is the call that we're actually making on the device. So what we are doing is we are adding an extra function dispatch for fsync. And all we're going to do is increment that address, the address number of times, which will cause this address in the kernel, this fsync pointer, to be equal to the trampoline address. And that means that when we go and invoke fsync and do an fsync syscall on the nvos device, we will get execution um, in the uh, er, execution PC will be diverted to this kernel trampoline address. So basically, the code at this address will get executed, and we install this code, this load uh, PC and branch uh, R0. So load a 32-bit value from PC, which is this address. So PC is the current program counter. But on ARM, you add eight bytes to it because it's actually a little head. That's due to pipelining and the architecture. We're not going to go into that. It's a hardware thing. But effectively, this is the code that's going to get executed when fsync gets called. Now, unfortunately, we don't want to change that address in the kernel. Once again, we are incrementing a value. So we don't want to have to rethrow the bug because we don't know the initial state. We're going to assume it's zero. And if it's not zero, then we're going to assume that it's valid. Now, that means that we can't arbitrarily direct execution in user land uh, with that primitive. So that's why we installed this basic little thunk here that will allow us to change out this address and this will give us one extra layer of indirection. So basically the kernel is going to load that address uh, and then jump here and then it's going to load a new address that we now control and then jump to there. And that is how we divert that execution. Increment address is actually throwing the exploit. So here, we're doing exactly what we said we were going to do. We create a copy of the semaphore clone parameter structure in user space. We initialize it to zero. We then fill in that original pointer, and we store the increment address minus 14 hex. Now, 14 hex is the offset. Um, uh, 14 hex is the offset of the ref count field on this uh, h a ridge. So basically, we control a ridge. So this is the pointer that we filled in in that structure. And ref count is the offset uh, in that structure. Uh, here, we can see it here, is at offset 14 hex. Take my word for it. We had to actually go and figure that out. But basically, uh, we subtract off that 14 such that we're actually incrementing the user requested address. And then we invoke the ioctal for semaphore clone, which will cause the exploit to occur. And then we do that kernel ad uh, trampoline address times to cause the kernel trampoline address to be present at this location in memory, assuming this was null before, which it was. And then we can do an fsync now. And this fsync is now going to jump into that code. And then that code is going to divert execution to install check because that is what we registered as the trampoline 
execution point, which will cause this to return zero, which will cause the function to return zero, which will cause fsync to return zero, which then will indicate that we have installed our exploits, which we then panic if we uh, or return an error if we failed to install, print a message if we did, and then we return up from this point. And that's what we did. So if we do a make run over here, um, whoops, if we go into Android Motorola uh, thrower, make run, and we'll see all of those things will print out. We will see um, implant already installed, false. We just rebooted the phone, so it will be in this original state where this is zeroed out. We then attempt to install the implant. We then successfully installed it, which indicates that we were able to now call fsync and it does something different, something that we control. And then final, finally, we actually get a root shell, but that's just other stuff that we do later. But that is how the kernel level exploit of this device works. We then get root by basically calling implant run as kernel, which is just going to um, update the trampoline address and call fsync. So it's just going to basically say, please call this thing and then call that thing. Um, all we're going to do is load the addresses for uh, commit creds, which is a function in the kernel, which is going to commit a uh, credential structure uh, into the current process, and then prepare kernel cred, which is going to create a new kernel level uh, uh, credential for the system, which is going to be root. So basically, what we do is we prepare kernel cred, which is going to create a new root credential, and then we're going to commit those credentials to install those as our current credentials, and then we return one, two, three, just because we can, and I know this is going to be covered by my face now, uh, which is fine, but when we get to the end here, uh, we'll see that now we are root. That's it. That's basically what we went through. So is, is there anything people would like a good explanation of there? I'm going to catch up on chat. How would this bug be preventable in Rust? Wouldn't you need to always properly parse that pointer to the type you defined uh, as a safe copy from user space? It seems like the only reason the bug exists in the kernel is because C doesn't have any types. Um, the problem is they are using a kernel that's provided by user space arbitrarily. And in Rust, you cannot do that. You cannot use a raw pointer without unsafe code. So if you're writing safe code and you're running in an operating system that is designed that you write drivers in safe code, you have no way of accessing a raw pointer like that unless you explicitly do it unsafely. So that operation is inherently unsafe. Um, and C does have types. C is a uh, typed language. So none of this has to do with typing. Um, let's see. Okay. Um... Well explained. Did you uh, hook a debugger up at any point while exp uh, uh, while developing the exploit? Nope. We didn't have a binary for the kernel, and we didn't have a debugger. We didn't need one. I typically don't write exploits with a debugger. Okay. Is this relevant with newer devices? This exploit itself? No. There's no way it is. It's an old device. Is this technique relevant? Yes, but you have to get past mitigation. So you would have to do a lot more work. You would need a leak to get past ASLR. You would need to do a lot more than this to actually get root because these uh, things are protected and monitored um, such that you kind of have to evade detection on those things. You wouldn't be able to directly have the kernel jump to user land due to PXN. Um, basically, this exploit, let's be honest. On modern Android, I would be able to exploit this bug and get arbitrary execution, but it re would require significantly more work. Um, so, basically, what do you think about SE Linux SMAP? Uh, SMAP is not related to SE Linux. Uh, SMAP is uh, an Intel specific mitigation that prevents you from accessing user space memory while in the kernel. Um, in this case, we actually wouldn't be stopped by SMAP. We would be stopped by SMEP because we are passing uh, arbitrary code to the kernel, but the kernel is never actually reading data from user space. Technically, it is when we pass the um, uh, structure to it here, but that sort of thing is uh, an exception for SMAP anyways.
how did you get the exact firmware for the phone? Um, I think I saw a sign final. Did you extract the firmware from there and then download the kernel source? Um, we didn't have the firmware when we wrote the exploit. So we actually leaked the firmware by using our exploit. Once our exploit worked, we used that to dump the entire kernel memory to user space and save that to a file. And then we built a kernel uh, using the source code, uh, which matched it identically bit for bit. So now we have a kernel um, where we have full symbols on it because we built our own kernel that matches it identically, which is actually relatively difficult on its own right. Can you explain the commit credentials again, uh, how you get there and what was before? Um, in terms of like why this is mitigated now or, or what this does? Prepare kernel cred returns a new credential structure that is meant for uh, a kernel level process, um, which is basically the same as a init or root. Um, and commit creds is just going to save that as the current uh, executing process's credentials. So we're basically setting the current executing process's credentials to kernel credentials. That's it. Um, let's see. This exploit is a CTF level uh, kernel exploitation entry task. Yeah, it's super, super straightforward. Um, let's see. You're so smart and talk so fast. It's like you talk to yourself and solve everything uh, while you're talking about your, uh, while you're talking yourself. Yeah, I don't know why I do it so naturally. Like, I don't really have to try. I'm just kind of talking. Um... Too long, uh, didn't watch. Map RWX memory at address. Create a function pointer and kernel structure to address by incrementing null pointer address times. RWX memory contains trampoline with changeable function pointer, allowing arbitrary invocations of a user space function from kernel mode by invoking fsync on the device. Use this to set credentials of the current process to root. Yes, that's exactly what we did. Perfect example. Um... Wouldn't you be able to use this uh, bug as a primitive to write arbitrary payloads to kernel memory? Yeah. We can do anything. <laughs> we can do any. That's what we did. We literally wrote an arbitrary address into kernel memory, and that's how we registered a function pointer in the kernel. Um, but now we have kernel execution, so we can do literally anything. We own this device. We can do anything we want now. Um, let's see. Doesn't really get much easier, except in the CTF, the bug would actually be uh, quite more easily thrown in your face with a custom kernel module. Yeah, and this we had to actually find the bug. Um, we didn't have a binary, so we weren't able to know the offsets of things. We had to use KL sims. We had to use methodologies that used uh, strict the start of functions. We couldn't use like mixed uh, addresses of things. So um, definitely, some things were a little bit harder here than a CTF problem. But it this is about as easy as you can possibly get for. Uh, Android exploitation. In modern Android, this wouldn't even remotely fly. It's much, much harder than that now. So that's kind of how that shit goes, unfortunately. Um, have you ever taken improv classes? I haven't, but I'm actually really fascinated by improv. I personally really like stand-up comedy, like local stand-up comedy. Um, I just really get into it like it, it just cracks me up even though the jokes are typically not super funny um I think there's a part of me that understands the like these are random people from nearby these aren't the best people in the world and when you wait things like that and have a couple drinks um it's really fun so I've actually thought about doing improv I really like it it's one of my favorite genres of comedy um, so that would actually be really cool, but I don't know. I've thought about doing like stand up or improv or something like that. Um, so basically in the for loop, you're incrementing until you've reached, uh, the F sync. So what we're doing is we are incrementing a value until it is equal to an address. So we basically increment something a thousand times such that that value becomes a thousand. Um, that's effectively what we do. So, um, Let's see. And then we call fsync, which will invoke uh, that function pointer to get uh, executed. Um, uh, let's see. Do it in modern Android? I do this shit all the time in modern Android. I mean, I haven't done Android since like 7 or 8, so honestly, I'm like a couple years out of date. But it's the same shit, just a little harder. 
Um, what makes it harder in modern Android? ASLR will basically randomize the addresses in the kernel, specifically KASLR, kernel ASLR. PXN will prevent you from executing things directly in user space. Um, PXN will prevent you from... Uh, is that what I just said? Yeah, PXN will prevent you from executing arbitrary things that are located in user space, which requires that you copy the executable code into the kernel, which requires that you have a bug that allows you to basically copy memory. Um, in this case, we'd be able to write our stuff in. We would have to probably get something that causes an allocation to get invoked in the kernel, such that we have a place to store that code. There's likely a hypervisor that's going to be monitoring page tables for the creation of writable and executable memory memory, um, such that we would have to use the correct techniques of doing that, or just be fucked if the kernel only uh, allows for static code, if it's a fully static uh, kernel, but most things allow for dynamic code. You might need a signature bypass because you're not going to be able to load uh, code into the kernel unless it passes uh, code signatures if the hypervisor is done correctly. Commit creds and prepare kernel creds wouldn't work with SE Linux. Um, you would have to actually set up a whole SE Linux context for that to work. You wouldn't be able to access this device very likely because the SE Linux policies would prevent you from accessing this device because there's no reason you need to access this as shell. Um, largely, there can be mistakes there and there can be openings, but ultimately, stuff like that is typically, typically going to be locked down. But yeah, a lot of shit. Um... Yeah, SMEP and PXN are analogous. Yep. Um, SMEP is a, an Intel-specific terminology for supervisor mode execution prevention. And PXN is some other shit. I think it's like page execute never. Um, privilege execute never. Yeah. So, um, yeah, that's effectively... Kind of a rundown of that. I hate all these acronyms. I do too, but unfortunately, they're needed for efficient communication. And I wasn't trying to communicate those things. I was trying to just show how much shit there really is involved in the process um, to really let you know, like, it's not, it's not straightforward, right? I'm just trying to overwhelm you with acronyms. But seriously, an exploit like this would likely take two weeks if you have prior art that you can build upon like you have maybe an aslr bypass maybe you have a kernel leak maybe you have an se linux bypass um and it would maybe take two weeks to like find and land a bug like this but if you don't have those things or you haven't done a specific android device recently or you're not trying to reuse existing exploits you have uh because you don't want to like have overlap in your exploits um it's going to be probably upwards of a month or two to find and exploit uh, an LPE like this on a modern Android device. So, a lot more difficult. Yeah. So, chat, give me some questions. I'm going to hit the head. I'll be right back. Um, I'll answer your questions, and then we'll uh, get into doing the things that I want to do here.
So I'm auditing my phone I bought in 2019. It has a driver's whose last commit was 2013. Oh boy, this is gonna be fun. Yeah, that sounds like a great device. Um, how did you create a trampoline at a fixed address? Uh, MMAP with map fixed. yep. Okay. Uh, do do do. Um, Rust exploit developing seems dope though. Got to try it as well. Yeah, just write all you could in Rust. There's there's just no limitations. It's a fantastic language. Do you know how I can unlock the bootloader of a Huawei uh, Y six two? Um. Nope, no idea. Um, find a find a bootloader exploit. <laughs> They're typically not too hard. Bootloader exploits are pretty easy. Um, you just flew through all of those modern mitigations. Is there a way you could uh, show those on a more recent device? Um, at another time, but yes. Um, it's also dangerous because you don't know uh, which black hat guy is lurking in chat, ready to sell exploits to whomever. Yeah, go ahead and sell this absolutely worthless exploit. <laughs> is that a Nightingale CXO chair? No, this is a... Um, this is a... Um, well, now I'm thinking about it. Son of a bitch. I, I like, can't even think of the brand name right now. I am, wow. Uh, Herman Miller, Arion. Okay. So. Harmon Karn. <laughs> yeah, Herman Miller. <laughs> okay. So what we want to do is we want to image this device. We want to take a snapshot of the executing kernel, and we want to get that snapshot moved into QMU. So to do that, we need two things. And the two things that we need, we need all of memory state. Specifically, we need all of physical memory state. With physical memory state, we can reconstruct virtual memory state. So we don't care about virtual memory. We only care about physical memory. Then we want the entire register state. So basically what we're gonna do, since we have arbitrary kernel execution, we're going to use that to halt the kernel. We're going to stop all interrupts to prevent interrupts from preempting our snapshotting tool. We're going to save all of the registers. We're then going to go through all of physical memory and save that somewhere, which is kind of tough because we have to either allocate half of RAM or we have to stream that information off of the device, um, which is kind of a hard problem. But that's what we're gonna try to do. So basically we're gonna start off um, by grabbing the register state, mainly because it's a little bit of fun. We're gonna be able to write some assembly here. Um, which is something we haven't done in a while on ARM. Honestly, my assembly on ARM is absolutely fucking rusty. Um, so we're gonna probably do some STMFDs in here. So, could you exploit this without the trampoline? Yes, the trampoline is just giving us persistence and allowing us to rerun the exploit or reuse the prior exploit from a previous run. So, um, can you activate ASLR on this device? No, no. I mean, yes, but no. Um, okay. So what we're gonna do is, uh, let's see. So what, what we need is we need our code to be executed first. Like basically we want to atomically uh, save all register state and to do that, uh, what we want to do is basically save all of it off in a known good location. And we're going to store it right here because we can. So we're going to have um, word, I think there are uh, 30, how many registers are there on ARM? 16? 32? 30, 32 plus PC? Um, anyways, we're going to have, so, um, hmm, how do I want to do this? 
I might write this in a separate assembly file and then import it into here because we're gonna have, we want to know that we're getting execution immediately because we wanna make sure that not a single register has been modified by our snapshotting tool. So what we want to do is basically go through and uh, take our snapshots um, in a clean spot here. So just realize I have the golden kappa. Oh my God, you have the golden kappa. Uh, Rusty as in completely safe or, uh, and borrow checked? I, I don't know what I said Rusty about. I don't know if that's a joke or not. It might have not aged well with chat. Um, I thought you wanted the kernel image. Uh, why do you want uh, register state 2? So basically, I need all the physical memory and then all of register state because register state is required to resume execution of the kernel. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a snapshot of the kernel right now just at fsync, and then we're going to load that kernel into QMU, and we're going to resume execution from the exact same point that we stopped execution on the phone. And that's going to allow us to continue execution, in, including privileged transitions and all sorts of other things. We might not get to that today, but we'll get to see like the return out of F-Sync, maybe the return back to user space, depending on how much things fight us. So what's the learning curve for Rust? The highest of any language. It's, yeah, steep. Um, okay, <laughs> your arm assembly was rusty. Oh, I see a golden cap in chat. That's actually a golden kappa. Holy shit. Wait, what? What? Oh, one second. You actually had a golden kappa? Well, goddamn. Kappa one, two, three in chat. <laughs> Oh, oh, whoop, whoop, golden kappa. <laughs> the chat's is a mess now, hell yeah. Who has it? I got it. <laughs> I, have the, I have the golden kappa, na, 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 boo, boo. <laughs> kappa, one, two, three. <laughs> Oh my god, you guys jelly? <laughs> Four golden cappas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and we got more golden cappas. <laughs> god, that's so cool, man. All right, so we're going to go, uh, we're going to want to write this stuff in assembly with an assembler. Um, so we're going to start that off in a another window. And to do that, we're going to go, ah, we'll repurpose here. And when I say repurpose, I mean start a new workspace. Uh, Android, Motorola, thrower, vim, shellcode.s. Um, and then over here, as long as this is at the bottom, I'm going to move my face uh, up to here. Okay. Yeah, I'll just I'll crop it a bit because I can. Um, basically... Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna write some shellcode, and to do this, we need to get valid ARM assembly working. Um, and we'll do that by going into uh, Android, Motorola, into our thrower, and we'll do an ARM, um, honestly, Linux muscle ABI, AS, so we're going to assemble shellcode.s, which has then created, um, I guess, an a.out, which is not exactly what we want. But if we do an objump d a dot out, this is going to be the disassembly, which is just the text section, which is what we want. Um, and we can start doing some uh, nice things to kind of clean up this code because this might get uh, relatively advanced. And if this gets relatively advanced, then I want to make sure that the code is clean as possible. Um, so basically, this is the entry point of our shell code. And what we want to do is we want to obj copy out the text section. Um, and to do that, I'm just going to Google it on another screen. Um, and it's basically, we're going to do muscle ABI obj copy um, 
I think like dash B for binary and then um is it dash dash binary? There's binary architecture, but I don't think I want that. And then we only want a specific uh section. So there's a there's a couple ways that you can obj copy it out. So we're just gonna do um dash um hmm google says dash s no that's definitely not right uh o binary output format binary only section text so only copy the text section uh from the a dot out to a dot shell code right and now if we look at a dot shell code, it should be 12 bytes, which is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, 12 bytes for this entire thing, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna throw this into our make file. We're gonna make a shell code, and then we're gonna copy those commands. And this is going to allow us uh, to basically uh, create our shell code as we need it. Um, assemble. And I think I can do an assemble dash O to uh, shell code dot O, uh, shell code dot S, and then we'll do shell code dot O um, into uh, shell code dot bin. Arm A dot star, make shell code. And hopefully that has made a shell code dot bin that is uh, 12 bytes, and it has. NASM FBIN, yeah. Can't do that for ARM, unfortunately. Otherwise, I'd be using NASM here. Um, you should learn to scroll a TMX pane from keyboard. Ah, fuck that. Scroll wheel, man. Scroll wheel is so good. Okay. Um. So, basically, this is... Uh, we're going to... Now we can start applying labels to stuff. This is going to be, um, uh, yeah, this is going to be the, um, I kind of want to put it at the start. So this is the entry point. We're then going to uh, branch to uh, next, which is here. We're then going to move this into here. So this is uh, fixed data and basically what we're going to do is we get execution here which is going to branch to next and then this fixed data will allow these things to not move around as the code size changes so we're just putting in them in a location where we won't move things around and that's that's it um and part of this i want to also do arm linux muscle eabi um objdump d l shell code dot Oh. Okay. So basically, this is going to branch to next, which is then going to load that PC. Obviously, that PC is not correct. We're going to say fixed data. And I think that's going to make that relative. Um, yes. PC minus 12 hex. So that is going to load fixed data now into R0 and branch to that. Okay. Um, I'm not even in Tmux, y'all. I feel like the Golden Kappa might uh, actually be RNG now. Yeah, it's absolutely RNG. Uh, t is now Twitch shiny hunting? Yeah, for sure. Okay, so uh, now what we want to do is save all of the register states. So we're going to go and Google um, uh, Firefox ARM registers, and it's been so long. I think it might be 32 registers. Uh, yes. Wait, 16. 16 registers in PC. Wait, PC is R15. Oh, it's just 16 registers. Ah, nice. Okay, so then we're going to have word um, registers. We're going to... Um, we're going to uh, store R0 into uh, registers. Can I do that? I should be able to do that. Yeah. 
And I could label all of these independently, or I could do an array. And I'm going to do an array. Um, uh, Rept 16 uh, endar. So basically, repeat these words 16 times. And then we're going to store R0 into uh, registers, which is good. And then store R1 into registers, which is going to be wrong. But we want uh, plus 4. I guess I just do registers plus four. Is that right? So yeah, relative, these should all be the same thing. So that's going to start at eight, uh, eight C. Okay, sweet. We're doing it right. Okay, so we're going to use some Python to write our code for us. For reg in range uh, sixteen, print. I can't believe I like have forgotten how fucking registers work on ARM. Store r um, reg to registers plus um, four uh, reg times four uh, o to x o x something in that ballpark. Um, There we go. So basically, this is going to save all of the registers to their respective locations. We're not using the alias names for registers, but that's totally fine because this is um, this is an assembler, so we're good. You could also use store the motherfucking data to spill multiple regs. Yeah, I totally could. I'm just doing this for the explicitness. That way, I don't have to worry about ordering or how anything works. Um, I'm just doing this to be ex extremely explicit. But yeah, you could just do a, 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 a STMFD um, like R0 through R16 to registers or something something like that, right? Uh, might be the other way around. I, I, forget, I forget the way. Yeah, whatever. But basically, you can store multiple registers. And I don't know if you can do all 16. I can't remember. Um, so this is technically storing PC, and I forget uh, the properties of storing PC, but we don't really care in this case. But ultimately, this is going to save every single register into memory um, at this location, at these registers, right? So there is nothing, um, nothing's being modified. Now, this is going to cause R0 to be modified, um, but we're just going to do this here. Two cycles ahead, yeah, plus eight. That's what I'd expect. Uh, that's the same thing that for branches. Okay, so basically we have all of those registers that we're gonna store off. Yeah, I guess it's just risk five and MIPS that have 32 regs. I feel like 16 regs is a good amount, but I think like 24 is the perfect amount. Um. How's the career outlook for a reverse engineer? Fantastic. Infinite money. Uh, defense, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Hell yeah. Glad you're enjoying the content. I'm going to tilt the camera down a bit just because I'm slouching. And that's just going to happen. Arm 64 is 32 regs. Hell yeah. That should be slightly better. Still a good view too. Are you using infinite money? How? Because everyone pays infinite money for security engineers. And you can be a security engineer if you're good at reverse engineering. Effe effectively, that's what it kind of comes down to. Um, that actually probably helped the white balance quite a bit. So, okay. All right, so we store all of the registers, and once again, we just know that everything's in order exactly as they are. And that is going to then branch after that point. So we are just good. This is going to save all the registers, so let's try it out. Um, so now that this is a dependency on all, we're going to say shellcode is needed. So now shellcode will be made when we do all. And then that shellcode will get included, uh, which is called shellcode.bin. 
And that's actually what we're going to paste into our exploit here. Um, uh, create a trampoline. And we'll do a trampoline um, dot dot. So um, const shellcode u8 is include bytes uh, shellcode dot bin. So include these bytes. Uh, it might not be a reference. I'm not 100% sure. Um, shell code dot len copy from slice shell code. So we're just going to copy that data into there. And then we know that bytes four through eight are the address of that trampoline. Uh, because we have one instruction here. This is bytes four, uh, byte four here. Right. Okay. And then, uh, dot, dot slash, because that's relative to the source directory. And there we go. So range end is out of bounds of this. Um, yeah, we're just going to say the uh, kernel trampoline address is uh, kernel trampoline size, which is just going to be shellcode.len. So we'll just do this. Um, load the shellcode. This is going to be uh, shellcode.len. So make sure there's enough room for shellcode.len. And then we're going to map shell shellcode.len is the size of that slice. Okay, and then we won't have to slice that down further. Um, and then the phone just crashed. Um, so clearly I did something wrong that I need to adjust. Um, that's going to load shellcode.bin. Shellcode.bin is going to contain this. Oh, I can't write to PC. I, I can't can I? No, I should be able to store here. Include bytes from a crate? Nope, that's default Rust. It's fantastic. One of the coolest things about Rust. By the way, uh, Gidor 9.2 added Risk 5 support. Yeah, I saw that today. That was fantastic. Some days it just feels like you're a detailed code reviewer. Oh, yeah, that's that's what you are. And then modern fuzzing is just you're a, you're a, a tester. All right, we'll see if this is going to crash the phone. Um... I think you can see this here. Uh, hasn't loaded yet. We'll see if this is going to crash. It probably is. Um, no. Installed. Okay, sweet. So it did work. Um, we maybe had weird caching problems when we switched, and we might see reboots like that. Um, but anyways, we were still able to get root, and now we're using our new shellcode, which is fantastic. That's exactly what I want to see. Okay. So, what we know is that um, this is the code that runs as the kernel, and um, git status, git commit, uh, git add git ignore, cargo star, make file shellcode.s, source git status, vim make file, uh, or vim git ignore, sh uh, shellcode.min, shellcode.o, um, thrower star, git status, git commit am, um, root working, right? So we're going to just commit this with the root uh, because we're going to quickly diverge from doing root, right? Um, we can actually just make a different function. So this is uh, get root shell. Um, so this is get root shell. And we're just going to comment that out, I guess. We're just going to say if false to comment that out in a way that's not going to give us a lot of annoying uh, warnings and errors. And now that's not going to happen at all. So this is just going to uh, basically do the install check of the exploits. Um, what? What? How? How would that change? Why does it want to use 64? And why only after I did that? I don't know what... Did I do cargo run? Yeah, I did. Okay. 
tried to run it on my host. Okay, so this is uh, uh, set to true to get a root shell. So now we have a root shell here. And next we're going to have, um, if true, this is going to be unsafe, uh, implant run as kernel. And this is a uh, snapshot device. So we'll do uh, unsafe extern fn snapshot device returns a u32 and this is going to be uh, snapshots the device this is going to be uh, commits a kernel credential into the current uh, task and then snapshots the device is going to um, basically um, snapshots the device we'll, we'll just leave it at that so the first thing that we want to do is get access to the uh, trampoline address and we'll do that by, uh, I guess we can move this out and load the shell code. That can just be in a global, which is fine. And then we'll do uh, unsafe uh, from raw parts. From raw parts mute. And then we're going to just say that trampoline i'd like to get access to this in the snapshot device but i think we're just gonna have to recreate access or it doesn't really matter um so we're just gonna return five from here so we're gonna assert that this is five and uh failed it to snapshot device obviously that's doing nothing but we really only care about the register state in the early stages in assembly so the early stages, we have to save all of the registers out um, prior to uh, saving the memory. So, like, memory we can save in Rust, but the registers, we need to make sure that we save them immediately before we start clobbering them. Because by the time this Rust code executes, we might have set up a frame pointer. We might have adjusted the stack. We might have allocated room on the stack, right? And I don't care about the state of... Um, the stack in this case, um, it's not going to be a perfectly identical snapshot, but it's close enough that it's totally fine. So that's effectively what we're going to do. And I'm also going to change this to uh, um, a Blix. And then, do I want to Blix this? Uh, BXRA. Uh, BXLR. So we're going to uh, branch and link into R0. So this is going to, um, uh, can I do this? Can I do these comments? I think I can. Uh, that maybe rebooted it. It didn't. Uh, so this is going to um, branch into the Rust uh, trampoline code. This is going to uh, save all register states. And then this is going to um, return back, right? So we're going to create a snapshot here. And then when we go to load this into QMU, we're going to bypass this call and just continue execution. We've saved our stack and all of this stuff here. We reload those registers, and it's as if we are executing at the start of here. We adjust PC accordingly. In this case, we actually don't have to because it points to here. And we return back. OK. So, um, uh, why do you use assert instead of assert equal uh, for reasons why don't you use print with print ln? It's more explicit, and I prefer that more. Uh, what exactly are you doing, and what exploit are you referring to? I'm referring to an exploit that we uh, wrote the other day. Um, so, um, we have no name for it. Uh, chat will have to name that exploit for us. Um, how much skill gap is there between understanding this versus having the intuition to do it professionally? I don't know. I'd hazard, I'd hazard it's massive. I would hazard it's pretty astronomically large. Um, but unfortunately, that's uh, how it works. I think this might die here. I don't know how our, uh, I guess our cache is probably okay. Um, it's hanging, and I don't know why it is. Obviously, you can't see the phone. I'll try and put it in front of me so you can like kind of see whether it reboots or not. Um, 
But let's see. I don't know why that's. Is it because I'm not storing? Uh, oh yeah, because I'm clobbering LR like a fucking idiot. Um, so we're just gonna uh, push uh, LR and then we'll uh, pop PC. Wow, it's been so long since I've done arm assembly that I'm gonna make stupid mistakes like that, and it's just gonna be embarrassing. Um, this kernel might be fucked. So, like, this kernel's probably pegged at 100%. I'm just gonna reboot it. Uh, ADB reboot. Just to make sure everything gets clean slated. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna push LR. Uh, we can even push R0, not that it really matters. Um, actually, we need R0 because that's the return value. But push LR and then pop that back into PC. And this should build. Okay, and it does. Good. So I think I'm getting confused because here I'm making it and here I'm actually running it. Um, what does it do? It It's an arbitrary uh, kernel increment, which we've turned into arbitrary code execution. Wow, such idiot. <laughs> Much mistakes. I'm I'm sorry, chat. I let you down today. Guess we're getting amateur hour. So sorry. <laughs> uh, don't forget to follow me on uh, Twitter and join my Discord and and uh, subscribe to my YouTube. <laughs> uh, you can find them uh, my Twitter here and my YouTube here and my um my uh, Discord here and my OnlyFans uh, here. Um, <laughs> okay, let's see, difference between uh, BL and BLX, BLX is indirect, BL is relative, and BLX is branching to a register, come on, fucking work, we did it, we installed our implants, okay, so that means that should work, and this assertion did not fail. If we change this to a 6, the, the assertion should fail now. Fantastic. So it means that uh, everything works uh, as we expect. And we don't clobber anything. The only thing we clobber is uh, calling convention clobbers, uh, which should be the same between user space and kernel. Uh, should be EABI for both of those, and then pop back. So everything's good. So that looks good. Um, <laughs> sell out. Sorry. I gotta I gotta make my dollar bills somehow. Discord is actually ballin'. Are people chilling in, in Discord right now? Oh shit. Yeah, people are posting their fucking setups. How sick is that? That's pretty dank. I like how everyone has me up on them. That's how you know it's super cute. <laughs> Trying to be confident. <laughs> Okay, um, so many feet fit picks in his OnlyFans. Yeah, Geek Pirate is one of our uh, highest uh, payers on OnlyFans. Don't know much about ARM. Shouldn't you also save the special regs? Um, in this case, uh, nothing has been clobbered. So R0 actually is not a clobber because it's the return value. Um, and everything else is not a clobber. Well, we didn't clobber anything here. This is just writing to memory. Um, clobber memory, and then uh, we're using standard calling conventions here, so we're not actually doing anything egregious here. Blix also uh, changes be between arm and thumb modes. Yeah, branch and uh, link exchange. The Geek Pirate blushes. Hey, Geek Pirate, how you doing today? You looking real cute. I mean, stuff like CR0, 123, and X86. Yeah, I don't have to save those. Well, Yes, I do have to save those when we want to do a full snapshot, but we're starting off with the basics, and then we're going to ramp it up. So we can initially kind of get this memory model loaded into... Um, I, we're probably not going to emulate it right away. We're probably going to load it into a script that will show us the virtual memory layout. So we're going to write a page table walker. So for that, we're going to need the TTBR0 and TTBR1, which are the translation tables, which are equivalent to CR3, on x86. Um, the other CRs I don't need uh, because we're just we're going to be running in a pretty general purpose mode that we won't necessarily have to save all of those control registers. Uh, so we're going to ignore those sorts of things right now. Um, but yes, we technically would want those if we want to do a full 
transplant. And I think what you'll find is that over time, we'll probably add registers more and more as we decide they're needed. Um, but right now we're starting with the basics just so we can, this will allow us to kind of make like a, a fake GDB shell where we can kind of poke around memory and read and write things um, as if we're in this address space. And it's just going to be to evaluate whether or not we're snapshotting correctly. But yeah, for sure. Ask questions like that all the time. I love questions like that. Anything to distract me from trying to pretend like I know how to hack. <sighs> Your view outside looks so nice. Isn't it fabulous? I don't know how well that's coming through on the camera. But yes, it is fabulous. It's wonderful out there. Except for my landscaping, which is completely shit. But you can't see that because the monitors cover all of the weeds and tall grass. There's a lot of rare Pokemon out there. Um, okay. <laughs> you live alone? Hell yeah. Fuck roommates. Um... All right, so we have the register state. So now we need to get the memory state, which is the hard part. Actually, let's go get the TTBRs. Um, oh, and let's print these registers out. Let's, uh, let's run this, and we should have access to the trampoline through here. So we can do let mute regs is equal to unsafe... Um, Tramp, uh, uh, implant dot trample lean. And this code's going to be kludgy for now until we figure out what we're going to do. Uh, trampoline dot trample lean. And then we're going to do eight to, uh, eight times 16. So we're going to get all of the registers. Uh, technically we don't need to slice like that, but we can. Uh, core slice from, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I got snagged on my own table. Okay. Um, <laughs> T-Tours. <laughs> okay, so uh, from raw parts. And we're going to pass in the address of that as pointer as uh, const u32. So we're going to cast it into u32s. We know it's on a line, so we can actually safely do that. Um, uh, technically, we're violating some aliasing here because it's a mutable reference. Um, but uh, we're just going to be fine with that. Implant.trampoline. Drop trample. You know what? We're just going to do this. As const u32 for 16. And then we'll just deref it. We'll just, uh, we're basically doing a cast of this. Um, so regs is equal to a deref of this memory. So we're going to, uh, yeah. So uh, get that memory, eight through, uh, that eight, that offset eight is that this is four bytes, this is four bytes, which means that this is at eight bytes. And then it continues for eight times 16. And then uh, we convert it to a pointer to a, um, as pointer, convert that to a pointer to that, and then we deref it, and then that means we should have the arm registers here. Uh, lower hex not implemented for that. Uh, add a little question mark on here, and this should be the register state, and that looks good. So here we have R0, R1, R2, R3, 4, 5, you know, so on and so forth. So this is PC, um, and that makes sense. Um, that is indeed PC. That's going to be uh, 8 hex bytes past um, this location, which is where we store PC. So what's 84 plus 8? It is 8C. So that is the uh, address that PC is at. So it looks like the registers are being saved correctly. And we see a lot of these are kernel addresses, which is what we would expect. So... Um, when are we getting a Cribs uh, episode Gamozo edition? Maybe when I build my dream house. Do you do stock exchange? Why so many monitors? I do, but I mainly just have it for hacking. Extra hackings. Um, let's see. Um, something about danger. What's dangerous here? Do you have any danger noodles? We have some slight danger noodles, but I do have black bears. 
Uh, how nice of the camera to remind you to stretch your legs every 15-ish minutes? Yeah. Isn't it 4 times 16? It is not because the size of a U32 is um, 4 bytes, so that implies the 4. What's a danger noodle? A snake. Uh, welcome to the danger zone. Okay. So this is going to be uh, get the registers from the um, uh, trampoline snapshot location. Okay. So now we can get the register state, and it's probably going to differ each time we run this ever so slightly. Uh, actually, if we were to just... Mm, if we were to run it twice, it might not in the same loop. But anyways, this is giving us all of these addresses. So ADB shell. So now we need to figure out where uh, RAM is and how much RAM we have. So we see that uh, system RAM is uh, at this address. So zero, physical address zero, to 14 hex. There's also some additional RAM in these locations, so we might need to save that off. But here's the thing. When you're snapshotting a device, as long as you don't map in the memory that you don't snapshot, it doesn't matter whether you snapshot it or not. So if we take a snapshot where we only save uh, 0 through uh, 13 million or 130 million hex, as long as we don't map in these other things, we would just observe a fault if something were to try to access other physical memory. Um, and that is kind of something we'll rely on. So we might just snapshot everything here. But um, basically, system RAM is here, and kernel text starts at 3B. Now, there's something that might be suspicious about this, and it is that if we were to look at address OXC03B1234 something here, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Hard to say. Um, but effectively, uh, where is the text section here? Oh, that is, uh, no, this is VM Linux. Uh, let's just look at uh, uh, proc kale sims. Um, grep text. Oh, uh, we don't have grep. Uh, ADB shell cat proc kale sims. Uh, kale sims. So... Text is starting at this address. Um, so basically, the Linux kernel typically has an identity map. And I might have my addresses mixed up. Um, so C00, uh, 8K, uh, S text here. And I do, hmm. Um, unless it's in the E0 range. Actually, I saw a lot of E0s. Uh, the E range here. Uh, ADB shell. Basically, the Linux kernel traditionally has a mapping where all of physical memory is just linearly accessible in virtual memory. So we are currently reading virtual memory, so we want to find where that is. And um, I thought it would be C0, but maybe it's E0? E0 is 6B? Um... Proc IOMEM. So, what's an address that we know here? E93. Uh, cat proc mem. Let's see if we have proc mem. We don't. Um, there's something in proc that tells you uh, the kernel layout, I think. IO ports, not that. VM, uh, it's like VM info. Is it VM info? Mem info. Is that what I want? No. <sighs> what is it? If I had grep, I'd grep for it. But I think there's something that tells me um, more information. So IO mem is telling me about physical memory. Uh, VM stats maybe will tell me some things. Um, 
We can just cat star. That's not going to panic the device, is it? Um, hmm. Hmm. Should be a page offset? Yeah. Um... So this is vmalloc info, and vmalloc is going to allocate virtual memory, and all of these addresses are in the E range. And if they're in the E range, then we know that uh, physical memory is at C, um, mainly because the E range is where uh, the virtual allocations are. So cat proc iomem. Um, basically, uh, I don't know why this is saying text and data are here. I think that might just be incorrect. Because we know that C0, right, the kernel is based at C0, and C08 would have this in the memory. Um, and I think that is in physical memory at those locations. So we're going to go with that for now. We're going to assume that physical memory starts that location. And uh, I'm going to take a quick bio break. Feel free to ask questions and bring things up here. I'll be right back. Fuck. Um, how you handle devices it's uh, going to talk to, I won't. I'm not going to have to handle any devices to fuzz anything reasonable. Devices are very, very rarely used, so you just don't really have to worry about devices. Um, so here's the hard part. I have to find, I have to allocate, how much RAM is in here? Um, and what's up here? Is that stuff being used? Where's E? Uh, so there's the E range, and uh, I'm just going to do hex E123, 1234, minus uh, hex C... I'm trying to figure out how much RAM this thing has. Um, print uh, hex this. Oh. What am I doing? There we go. Um, I don't know what these things are. I don't know what the, where those would be mapped. Hmm. And that's a little bit concerning to me, because I, I have no idea w where this would be at. Um, there's, like, not enough space. Hmm. 
Um, where are the hot pockets? I don't have any hot pockets. So that's 300 megs. Hmm. That might be all of RAM. I'm not... I don't know. I have no idea what that would be. A swap... Maybe a swap wouldn't show up in this. This is only physical uh, address spaces. Um... Hmm. So, we're going to need to, um... Right? Weren't the other addresses at E? Yeah, E. I guess EA. But that's still an not enough room. I'm basically trying to figure out if all of this memory is contiguous here. 2A. Oh, that actually might be right. Um, hex, so we're gonna basically determine the size of all of these things. This minus this, uh, minus zero, plus, I'm just adding up, uh, all of the memory here to determine the total amount of memory. And then this hex... I'm trying to account for all of memory on the system, but uh, I'm struggling. And then plus three. Uh, 34. So it can't all be mapped there. Place looks cozy, cozy in the evenings. Oh, yeah, it's fantastic. On Twitter, you asked about vacation days. Did you use them? Hell no. I probably won't. I mean, maybe. We'll see. Um... Toaster strudels are where it's at. Toaster strudels are good, but they require a lot of effort. They don't work like... You can't eat them just room temperature. It's just so much work to toast something. Are you kidding me? In, in, this, in this world, in this economy? Uh-uh. Okay. Um... I actually don't know what that virtual memory space looks like. Uh, ADB shell. The fact that there's like multiple sections of RAM is what's really throwing me off here. Does ARM use three level pages? It does not. Um, I mean, I think it does. Like, it just coincidentally does, but it's not, it's a 32-bit virtual address space. Um, arguably 33 bits. Well, no. On 64-bit, it's 49 bits instead of 48 bits because the, the kernel versus user separation uses two different tables. It's kind of weird, but 32-bit, um, I'm pretty sure it's just a 32-bit table. Let's look at one here, and let's look at mem. Um... Maps. Now, is that a permission error? I swore there was something that told me the mappings. Maybe not. Maybe I was thinking of IOMIM. Um. Here, we can just look at uh, uh, read fizz, uh, fizz. I just need to find something that does physical stuff. Um, wow, well, IO point, point, ah, um, I think it's actually right in here, uh, vert to fizz. So it's going to take the address and subtract the ident address, which is the, uh, identity map address, although we're looking at the wrong thing. So we want to look at arm, um, like maybe the physical is all there. Maybe there's a hole. Ah, oh. I think it actually works out. Let me see what, uh, I want to find something that is in this kernel that uses, uh, the two fizz, vert to fizz. 
Okay. I don't know if that symbol exists. It does not. So I'm going to try and quickly find some code that uses it. I'm pretty sure it's just going to subtract C0 from it. But I want to find a, a case in the build because there's going to be a lot of... Actually, we have the um, config. And the config might have that. Just trying to figure out where physical memory is. I'm pretty sure it's at C0. I just don't want to make that assumption. Um... Hmm. Maybe it's just always at C0. I don't know how I'm going to quickly find uh, an invocation of vert to fizz in a trivial way. Arc score. Um, this might do the trick. Uh, vert to fizz. This code should exist. Oh, wait. Uh, that's actually the other phone that we're working is the S3C. Do you ever dream of doing Pwn to Own? No. I have no interest in it. Otherwise, I would have done it by now. Not my cup of tea. The payouts are too low and the stress is too high. Um... Oh, nice. Here. Uh, minus page offset plus fizz offset. And then config page offset. And that's probably going to be the 8,000. Oh. Oh my god, I looked for a lowercase c. Are you fucking serious? <laughs> Nice. Nice. Okay. Um, so subtract C0 and then add the fizz offset, um, which is DRAM base. And let's see, config DRAM base. Uh, it's not present. Which I guess means that resolves to nothing or zero or something. I actually don't know what that becomes. I'm kind of curious now um, what that defaults to. I don't actually see where that's defined. Like, I don't think this is the actual chip in this device. So I don't think that's it. But I'm pretty sure it's just minus C0. Which was my initial guess, but it's important to be confident about these things. So, to snapshot the device, we have to allocate... To, to basically create a memory snapshot, we have to allocate half of RAM. Um, and to allocate half of RAM, um, we're going to do a K malloc. So we'll just go find where kmalloc is. kmalloc is the same as malloc. Uh, might be underscore. Ugh, come on. Uh, or calloc, sorry. Not kmalloc. Ah. It is kmalloc. What is the symbol name? Oh, under under kmalloc. Whoops. I was close. So kmalloc is going to take um, one argument, uh, which is going to be... Um, the uh, size, which it's going to vary based on architecture. In this case, we're using slub. So this is kmalloc. It's going to take a size and flags. And we can just do zero for size, or zero for flags. And I think I said it takes one argument, so I was wrong there. But uh, whatever. So we're just going to do um, uh, let kmalloc is equal to the address of kmalloc, which is this. Um, and then this is going to be uh, s prepare kernel cred kmalloc g. 
and it's going to be a function which takes a u size for one arg and the other arg is a gfpt which is a uh, bit y an unsigned bitwise which is just going to it's just going to be an int um, and unsigned so a u32 is what that's going to be and then it's going to return a pointer back to us so this is going to allow us to allocate kernel memory and I don't think I'm going to want to be able to do a print here. So we're just going to do kmalloc on um, kmalloc on 64 for now. We're just going to return that value. Um, print. Uh, we can get rid of this. 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 Print uh, k ret so kernel return is equal to this, and we're just printing out the return value that the kernel is giving us, which is hopefully our magical allocation, and it should be um, in physical memory. Uh, Dref k malloc. There we go. Ah, blah blah blah, and then then another thing. I think just zero should be fine for flags here. Oh my god, we are struggling, aren't we? Uh, oh, and mark that as U size. We got there. Okay, so it returned... Oh. No, that is a physical address. That's a physical address to the high bank. Stop slouching. Yeah, you fucks. I wasn't hacker posture. That's how I always... That's why I don't have a webcam on. So E6 um, is in this range. Yeah. Okay, we're hacking. We're hacking. So how much RAM did we decide this thing has? Um. So basically, we can allocate kernel memory. Now, we leaked that, so we're just going to not do that too much. Um, we can always reboot. It doesn't really matter. It's not fun unless we can ha harass you a bit. I know. It seems like people really like this. I love this webcam quality. Isn't this fantastic? Doesn't that look nice? Doesn't that look great? I actually have a DSLR here. It's a, it's a, it's a real camera. Now, the only downside is I can't get 30, uh, 60 FPS off of this. I'm only getting 30. Um, and I might have some frame drops off of it, but it probably isn't too bad. Am I still synced? I should still be synced. Yeah, I'm still I'm still synced. Uh, it's fantastic. So crispy? Hell yeah. Looks like you live in a millionaire area. Uh, yeah, I mean, Seattle. How it goes? Synced well enough? Seems pretty good. Okay. What desk is that? It's Ikea. Doesn't look 1080p. It is 1080p. So... It probably just doesn't look um, perfect through Twitch, but locally it looks absolutely 1080p. Um, as I frantically double check to see if I have it in 1080p, and it, it is. Autofocus, I have autofocus off. All right. So we want to save all of memory, and to do that, we're going to have const uh, pmem ranges u size is equal to um these are going to be a uh, tuples u size u size and we're going to say um here to here um hex here to hex here and all i'm defining is the uh ram locations of this device so this is um memory uh, uh system ram ranges taken from uh from proc iomem right and now what we can do is uh we have to determine how big uh, memory is here, so memory size is equal to uh, zero u size. We can just do this. Um, let memory 
size is equal to pmem ranges dot sum um, map uh, start end end minus start dot sum into a uh, u size yeah and then uh, memory size as u size and technically it's end plus one well we'll do end minus start and then we'll add one at the end the order of operations uh, kind of matters if we have ram that goes up to ff so end minus start plus one. So this is going to determine the size of memory and then print that out as the return value. And we did a bunch of things wrong here. I guess it's just that. Um, instead of uh, const that, you can write dot cast. Really? Is that a new thing? Pointer cast. Oh, 1.38? Yeah, that's pretty new. I don't know. I don't know which one I like more. Hard to say. But yeah, thank you for that. I will uh, look into that and see if that's something I want to put into my rotation. Uh, map not found on that. Yeah, we'll just uh, iterate on this. And then we probably have to throw some ampersands on things. Um, U size, U size, memory size as U32. Okay. Uh, okay, so that's the total amount of RAM. Um, 872 megs? Really? That's a lot of RAM. 832 megs. Huh. It's a beefy device. Okay. So, uh, determine the total size of physical memory. Then we're going to allocate, um, we're going to allocate, I'm going to move this plate out of frame. Oh, T-Tours. Okay. So, um, we're going to allocate room for half of physical memory let um adder is equal to uh, dref kmalloc for uh memory size over 2 um Oh, and here we can say if memory size mod two um, is not equal to zero, uh, return negative one, right? That should never happen. But basically, um, if it's not evenly divisible by two, that way we don't have to worry about rounding and all of that shit. Um, so we're going to allocate room for that. Let uh, storage is equal to unsafe... Um, core slice from raw. Uh, actually, let's just see if that succeeds. Let's ju let's just see if we can even allocate that. We're gonna have to reboot the phone pretty much every time we do this. Or 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 let's k free. We could. I don't want to get crazy here. We could free memory. Um. This one doesn't have underscores, yeah. Okay, cast that. Okay, free. Uh, U size is technically a, like a, a pointer, but we'll say U size. Okay, uh, free. Bam. And you're saying I can do K, K free cast? Not found on U size. Oh, it's only once you are in the pointer world. So once it's beca once it has become a pointer. So technically, I could maybe do it on the ref here. Uh, 
I think that worked. I swear to God, if we're just going to get a later error. Um, oh, wait. Yeah, it's going to, yeah, it's going to fight me. Okay, free. Okay, uh, that's, I can't apply a unary operator, of course. Um, okay. So now what we can do is we should be able to allocate this memory, and then if adder, uh, what does k-free return? Null? Uh, if it's equal to zero, return not zero. Otherwise, we're going to return an address, and we're going to uh, k-free um, address. So this is a uh, free the memory. So this is going to very quickly allocate half of physical memory and then uh, fuck. Um, and that makes sense. Ah, shit. And this is where it gets really difficult. Um, the recommended way to generate FN pointers is transmute. Yeah. Huh. So... I guess we would have known that because we can't fit all of memory into one of these memory ranges. What is not zero? It's the uh, one's complement. It's a uh, not zero. It's all Fs. Um, it's the same as tilde in most other languages. So this makes things very difficult. Basically, I don't have a good place to store all of memory. Which makes taking a snapshot uh, kind of hard. So... Huh, how do I want to do this? How do I want to do this? I don't even know. Um, I've done some weird things before where I've written like uh, custom network drivers that basically allow me to like ship out the bits uh, from like shellcode. Like I've written a network driver in shellcode. Obviously, I'm not going to do that on this device. Um, <sighs> Love the view. Yeah, it's fantastic here, isn't it? It's a little cloudy today, but whatever. It still looks great. Can you write to the FS? I can't without modifying memory. Um, handsome as hell? Hell yeah. So I think what I can do is... Um, I need to figure out how much memory I can allocate. I basically need to figure out, um, let's do that. We're going to write some, uh, shit. Even that's like relatively difficult. So basically I need to figure out where to store all of memory state and I have to store it in memory. Um, obviously if I, if I could allocate half of memory, I could copy the other half into it. And then I know both halves of memory are identical, right? So at that point I know all of memory. Um, so what I could potentially do is to split this up into smaller chunks. The question is, is there even half of memory free? And I would hazard, the answer is probably yes. I, w I would guess that, um, it's probably more than half of memory is probably free. Um... 
mem info. Mem total, 836k. Mem free. Oh, shit. God, Android is so memory hungry. So, um... Can't see mem free. Oh, sorry. Um, basically... That is... A predicament. Let me reboot. Let me see if that does it. Let's just kind of let's try and kludge this and see if we can make it work uh, in like a trivial way here. Doing some uh, ar uh, reading some articles. When was the big kernel lock removed from iOctals? I have no idea. Probably a long time ago. Unless you're reading OpenBSD documentation. Um, can you allocate in chunks? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of doing. As long as I have more than half of memory free. I could allocate in chunks. So I think I like opened a browser or like a settings menu. So hopefully, um, hopefully we'll be able to get by here. Huh. We can also assume some things about read only memory and assume that it hasn't changed and stuff. Like there, there is stuff that we can do. Um, but ideally, I don't make those assumptions, and I just dump everything in a blind way, right? So, I haven't logged in, I haven't done anything. I'm just going to leave it at the uh, main menu here. I can even turn the screen off. Uh, cat proc mem info. Hmm, not quite going to cut it. Um, although, uh, cached. There's plenty cached. I think we're actually fine here. Uh, we should be able to push these things out through cached. So we have more than half of memory here. Um, let's see how many chunks we can allocate. So... Gabblevidge! Thank you so much for the two months of Twitch Prime. Hell yeah! Don't forget to use your Twitch Primes here. It's important because it helps me eat. And by eat, I mean buy really expensive servers that I have no reason to purchase. <laughs> um, okay, so we should have we should have enough RAM here. Um, so what I'm going to do is try to figure out uh, if I can allocate. Um, how big are these ranges? Let's find what is the <laughs> Python on the phone. Um, what is the largest range here? Or the uh, I guess I care about the smallest range. So obviously it's not 13. It is uh, going to be this range is going to be the smallest range of memory. Um, and we could subtract these two. And we can see that this is this many bytes. Uh, so we should be able to allocate in like 32 byte chunks. Probably. Um, so we need to allocate. How much RAM do we have? It was like eight, 800 megs, uh, whatever it was. I guess we can trust this if this is reliable. I think it is. 836, 352 divided by 1,024. Uh, it's a little off. Like, we, we see a little bit more physical memory than that, but that's fine. Um, this is close enough. 816 megs. I'm going to assume if I divide this into 32 byte chunks, or 32 meg chunks, that'll be 25 chunks. So what I'm going to do is um, let allocations is equal to uh, zero size for 32. So this is um, make room for 32 allocations. And then we're going to do, uh, we're going to assume mem size is mod uh, 32. Um, actually, we'll just say 4096. Why not? Uh, just be really strict on that. Make room for 32 allocations. And then we're going to allocate those 32 things. So for uh, blah in 0 to um, 32, we're going to allocate uh, elk size is equal to memory size divided by 2 because we need half of memory. And then we're going to divide that by 32, which is the chunk size for this thing. Right? Um, these are kibby bytes. 
Uh, why do you use Rust if your uh, code is full of unsafe? Because it's a much better language to write things. You have uh, better, uh, like, the let bindings are much better, The and most of this code is safe, right? Like, unsafe in Rust is still safe code in many situations. It can be unsafe but it is still safe. Like, everything we're doing is safe here. So memory size divided by 2, divided by 32 chunks. So we're making 32 equal size chunk allocations, uh, and we'll do that via kmalloc um, elk size. Uh, that's a constant. We don't have to recalculate it, but we will because performance here does not matter. Um, and then uh, for bin in allocations, iter mute, and we'll just say bin is equal to this. And we can specifically say, um, like, bin size is equal to this, and then we can say this um, dot for each x is k malloc um, elk size 0. Right? So we're going to perform 32 allocations there. And then we're going to um, allocations iter mute for each x. We're going to do a k free on the um, allocation. And then we'll uh, x is 0. So we'll zero it out. I like to zero out allocations when I'm doing explicit allocations like that. I think it's much better. And then 1, 2, 3 is going to be our return code. Make run. So basically, we're trying to find room for half of memory. I'm going to need a curly boy in here if I want to make this work. And elk size. Not found in the scope. Yep, bin size. And then free everything. So hopefully, this will work. Kret 7b. Oh, um, that didn't check if they all succeeded. Uh, so what we're going to do is... Um, we're just going to say... Uh, all. So we're going to say if, uh, or we can say any. Let's failed is this. I guess we can do any here. Um, let failed, yeah. Failed is, uh, I'm going to actually do it on the what are we going to do here? <laughs> I haven't made up my mind on kind of how I want to do that. Anyways, we're going to say if um, uh, store x, and then we're going to say if x is 0. So if anything um, failed, then we're going to say if failed, um, return uh, 0, or uh, not 0. So if anything failed to allocate, then we're going to do that. And uh, for each on this. Uh, okay, negative one. So it seems like that failed. Um, let me just try like 256 and just see if that works. Kret 7b. Okay, so let's cut it up into bigger chunks. We'll do 256. How big is the stack in the kernel? This is going to be uh, 1k on the stack. That should be fine. K ret negative 1. I think we're literally just failing to allocate that much. Um, God damn it. Uh, the current function is probably safe until the point where you deref the function pointers. Yeah. I guess where I call the function pointers. Um... Off topic, but I'm curious what your interest uh, about your interest in physics. You talked about uh, physics projects in the future. Where does your interest come from? I have no idea. It's just like hard problems, I think, which I like. Um, I don't know. Uh, basically, this is telling me that I can't allocate this much memory. Um. And that is a problem. That is a big problem. So, I mean, how big are those chunks? Let's just let's just be real here. Um, we've got like let's say 900 megs of RAM. 
right? Which is overshooting, but whatever. Uh, divide this down by two. Divide that by 256. Oh, those are still massive. I should have 32k on the stack in the kernel. Um, let's just keep trying to go to a larger and larger size. Um, what's 2048? We should barely have enough stack space to do this. And these are much smaller allocations. Uh, we might have panicked it. I think we ran out of stack. Maybe there wasn't, uh, maybe the stack isn't. I guess it, the stack might be 4K. I don't know. Fucking rip, dude. Rip. I said I'd have the phone out in front, but I didn't. Sorry. <laughs> but yeah, the phone is uh, not very happy right now. I'm going to hard reboot that. I can dynamically allocate the um, allocation holder, and that would be fine. But unfortunately, unfortunately, um, hope uh, you don't mind for asking. I was just wondering. I see you often. Oh, in Gamosa streams. Oh yeah, yeah. Desu's just Desu. We're all Desu. <laughs> um. Can you compress and get a snapshot? Compression would be very difficult here. Be very difficult here. We could do like basic null page compression. I don't know, let's let's try that. Um, let's try to do, um, let's see how many pages are null, okay? How's that sound, chat? We're gonna comment all this out so we're not confused that it's running. And we're gonna say uh, for range, or for um, start end in pmem ranges, uh, for um, let size is equal to uh, end minus start plus one. And then we're going to say if size mod 4096 is not equal to zero, return bang zero basically return failure if it's not mod zero and then we can say the same about the starts um right so if either of those are not 4k aligned then we're gonna have a problem and then otherwise we're gonna fall through so this should run right we're not actually doing anything here um k rat 7b we'll just uh sure 7b is fine here so uh get the size of the physical range and then this is going to determine the alignment of the physical range is for a kilobyte aligned, kibibyte technically. And then um, what we'll do is we'll say uh, let mem is equal to uh, const, uh, what was the name of that uh, define? Page offset, okay. Um, this is the uh, base of physical memory. Um, base, ah, base of physical memory identity. Uh, it's not an identity map, uh, linear map. Identity map would assume that it's the same address for uh, both, but this is applying a transform, which is adding that C0, which I'm going to lowercase because I think it looks better. So memory is going to be equal to unsafe. Uh, we're already unsafe, which is great. Uh, core slice from raw parts. And we're going to say... Um, uh, a for page in start to end. Step by 4096. Um... And this should be, uh, I guess, plus one. I think it iterates regardless. Um, I think it's I think it's fine as long as it's one byte ahead. Uh, then we can do page as const u8, and the uh, size is four thousand ninety six. So basically, uh, this is going to create a slice, so a safe, safe, safe. 
rust accessor to that thing. Uh, Gamoza unsafe in chat. Um, and then we ref that. Nice. Okay. Mem dot um, if ah let zero mute zeroed is equal to zero uh, u32 and then zeroed plus equals mem all um, x is zero mem dot iter dot all x is zero as u32 and then this will return zeroed this is going to return the number of pages in physical memory which are completely zero uh, it's gonna panic the phone okay we can't read all of all of memory huh well The condition to check should probably be or. I think that's probably fair. Um, if that or that. I'm used to assertion checks now. Um, not that it matters. I mean, it technically does, but not in this case. Wow, so we can't... We can't read all of physical memory. Pages constant eight, four thousand ninety six. Okay, let's see if we can uh, read that first region at least. No. I'm not adding the fucking offset. God damn it. Um. Let page is equal to uh, page plus uh, config page offset. I could look at the fucking warning that's literally saying, yo, dog, you're not using this thing at all. <laughs> config page offset plus this. All right. Nobody noticed. Yeah, 250 of you, and no one noticed. Embarrassing. Okay, I was about to say, I should be able to read all of uh, system RAM. There's like MMIO spaces that I shouldn't be able to read, but I should be able to read all of this memory. So, let's see, here we go. Here we go, zeroed. Here it is. How much memory is zeroed? And it died. Okay, no progress has been made. We're going to try the first range. The first range looks a lot less sus. <laughs> We're basically just trying to read physical memory. Page zero. Hmm. Uh. Yikes. Yeah, join our Discord. Hell yeah. Share your setups. Yeah, for sure. Those setups are sick, man. We got some dank gamer console action. Um, We're going to try that first range. Why would this not work? Damn. Uh, from our parts. Zeroed. All. Enter all. DRFX is zero. If all of them are zero. Okay, we're trying the first set of ranges. That worked. 1DC, 1DB. Sweet, yeah. We're, we're basically seeing pages getting allocated. 1DA, 1DA. We can see things kind of get zeroed out. Oh, is that dying now? Oh! Is it time-based? Am I on a timer? I can't imagine I'm on that tight of a timer. It, it worked a couple times. Hmm. 
Why would I be on a timer? I just want to see the worst setups just as badly as I want to see the best ones. Yeah, the more Flaming Hot Cheetos wrappers you have on your desk, the, the more gamery you are. Um, so this works during early stages. Huh. Huh. Hmm. I, there's no way they would have a watchdog timer that's this fast. Like, this... I, how long is this taking? It's basically instantaneous. Like... I don't think I'm on a timer. One FE? Okay, can I do the whole thing? Can I... I'm gonna add this. 10 BF. And all of it now? All of RAM? Can't do all RAM. Okay. Um, I'm not... Too surprised. Some of the high RAM looks a little sus. Um... I think there's a chance that not everything is mapped in up here. Like, that would kind of make sense to me, is not, not everything is mapped. We can try and just throw this right away at the start, but um, I think we've done that. But yeah, this is a relatively hard problem, is basically finding a way to atomically uh, save all of memory. Unless I am getting fucked by an interrupt handler, but I don't know why I would have a problem getting interrupted here. Um, I don't think there's a red zone on, is there a red zone? Is there a red zone on arm? Let's try it. Okay. Uh, we're going to disable interrupts. We're going to have to do it anyways to get a cleaner, uh, more coherent, uh, image anyways. So how do we disable interrupts? T tours. Um, is it just that? CPSID? Really? CPSID I. So I is interrupt. Okay, it's that easy. Um, I and then F. So I accuse and fic. That's fine. I'm all for it. Well, that was a lot easier than I expected. I expected having to figure out some, like, annoying-ass thing. Uh, C-P-S-I-E-I-F. Tec technically, techni technically, I should care whether or not interrupts are disabled at the end, but we're just gonna, yeah, we're just gonna enable them. Try doing that shit on x86, it would be even easier. Uh, C-L-I and S-T-I. <laughs> it's literally easier on X86. <laughs> I get fucked. <laughs> um, okay. I don't think there are red zones, but anyways, we're going to disable interrupts. Uh, it makes me happier. But we should have interrupts enabled in uh, an F-Sync handler. There's, there's no reason we should have those disabled. So, will it work though? No. Okay, that's not it. That makes sense. It shouldn't be that case. Um, I'm really concerned about whether this, mm, this memory exists. Like, I'm... We're going to dump the first part of memory. We're going to dump the first part of memory. We're going to do that. We're going to do the small amount of memory first. We're going to dump that out. And then uh, we're going to try to reconstruct the page tables and see uh, what things are mapped in and with what permissions. And we're going to use that to improve our dumper. Okay. 
Okay. Um. Oh, look at all those golden kappas. <laughs> A global golden kappa. <laughs> it's just everyone now. Oh, that's fucked, man. Let's see how this looks. This should work. Nice. Care at 1FC. So now we have interrupts disabled. Um, and the phone didn't crash. So it means we were able to successfully disable those interrupts uh, while we took the snapshot, which is great. We needed to do that anyways. I was waiting to do that because I thought it was going to suck. I thought I had to work with um, uh, MCS and MCR and all those sorts of things. So isn't that fucking cool? So now we're just going to try this. We're going to try and split it up into uh, 256. Split up that memory into 256 pieces, which is basically that uh, one range. And we're going to see if we can allocate room to store that. Um, uh, we'll return 69. Nice! So we were able to successfully allocate room for all of these things. Um... So if not failed, this means we are able to allocate all of the memory. Then we're going to for bin in. Hmm. I mean, honestly, I can just. Hmm. Hmm. Um. Then I have to copy this memory to user space. Which is hard. I don't know how I'm going to copy this memory into user space. Um, I've got a sick idea. I have got an absolutely sick idea. I've never done this before, and this is why I love this shit. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mmap the biggest fucking thing I can mmap in user space, and I'm going to zero it all out. And that will cause as much stuff to be zeroed out in memory as possible, which will increase the amount of things that I can skip because they're zero pages. So I'm basically, we're going we're gonna to do, uh, we're basically grooming physical memory. This is fucking cool. I love this, man. This is why hacking is so fun. Because you have fun ideas and you get to try it out. Oh, I'm so excited for this. Let's try zeroed here. Our goal is to get records. We want to we wanna get this zeroed thing to a maximum record. Um... Okay, 1D5, right? So this is reporting the number of, uh, we'll multiply it by 4,096. This is the number of pages which contain entirely zeros. Um, and I'm going to print the uh, KRET in both uh, decimal and uh, hex. Let KRET is equal to this. Um, print... It might be pretty hard to zero out this memory. We'll see. Um, hopefully, we can just touch it all, but uh, whatever. Uh, KRET, uh, hex, and then decimal. So we'll have KRET and KRET. So we currently have 1.9 megs of memory. 1.9 megabytes of memory is currently zeroed out, and that number is probably going to change. Um, I can get rid of this uh, um, obj dump just to quiet this a little bit. And I'm going to get rid of some of these other things. Um, uh, why am I blanking on how to do make files? Is it, is it minus, minus doesn't print them? Or is minus ignores the return value? 
It ignores the return value. What? Uh, what am I fucking thinking of? I <laughs> what? I'm blanking. Please, please save me. Please save me. Um, it's not at, is it? It's at. Okay. <laughs> Yikes! That is embarrassing. <laughs> Okay, so we have a lot cleaner output, and we can get rid of this register dump. We don't need it right now. We'll just comment it out. Nice. Okay, so that looks good, and we can see that number is probably going to flutter around every once in a while. Like, if I were to click on an application, right, if I were to click on browser, this number is probably going to change, right? And it did. Um, it actually went up, but whatever. Okay. So now we have operation zero as much memory as possible. And to do that, uh, we're just going to allocate a big thing. So that KRET is basically um, reporting the number of zero things. We should be able to call it multiple times. times, And we can. We have a before and after. And I'm just going to do a vec OU8 um, let mute data is this. And we'll just see if we can allocate all 800 megs. Obviously, it's not going to be all in physical memory. Um, but then we'll do data dot uh, uh, for page in data dot. Hmm. We'll just do uh, data dot iter dot step by 4096 dot uh, for each um, for each mute. Uh, oops, iter mute for each uh, unsafe, we'll do unsafe uh, standard pointer right volatile x0 u8. We're just going to make sure we zero it out. We're going to be swapping really hard, but that's fine. It's just going to take some time. But we're going to we're going to try and zero out as much stuff as we can. Um This is fine. Um have you ever done game hacking? Nope, nope, never, never touched a game hack in my life. Oh, we got killed by Oom Killer, or did we panic the phone? We might have, we oh, 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 it survived. I bet, I bet, uh, Log Cat's like Oom Killer, really mad. Oh yeah, we killed, we killed a lot of processes. I think we killed um, uh, the system process. Okay, we'll try 300 megs for now. Oh, it's gone. Oh, maybe not. Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> yes. We zeroed out fucking what? 300 megs of RAM? You can't see it. Oh, shit. Hold, hold the hype. Oh, yes! Look! Wow! Wow, this is the first time I saw this result. This is so amazing. <laughs> but look at that. We can skip all of the zero pages. Right there. That's some big fucking brain hacking. You like that? You like that little trick? God damn, that was awesome. Dude, I was not expecting it to be that potent. That's almost all of RAM. Because look at this. This is 13FFF. This is 1291. This is like 90%, 95% of memory we zeroed out. Get out of there. Hell yeah. Bye bye. Get out of my damn memory. <laughs> now everything's swapping pretty hard now. Let's check this other range. You gonna copy the disk contents too? Nah, nah. Okay, 430, 430, okay. 
That's good enough. That's like half a ram. You know? Um... <laughs> Be gone from my RAM thought. How is the phone functioning if you zeroed out 95% of it? Because I zeroed it out in user space. Like, I didn't do anything sketch, right? Since I did it in user space, um, like, the kernel can just handle this, right? We've pushed the responsibility to the kernel. If we did that in kernel space, um, it could have gotten a little wackier. Obviously, we wouldn't have gotten an allocation of that size. <sighs> It's beautiful. It's, be it's beautiful. Let's just take a minute to appreciate how beautiful this result is. It's beautiful. So all we want to do is we want to zero out half of RAM. And that should do the trick. Oh, we're not zeroing everything out. We're just probing the memory. We're not actually zeroing everything out. <laughs> um, I guess it depends how Vector uh, does its filling, but we're just doing a right volatile to make sure they actually get zeroed out and commit. But as long, let's see if we can get this to 500. Um, this number will probably not print 500 because we don't have the whole memory range in here. Okay. So this means that half of, me more than half of memory, because memory was what, 870 megs total? Um or like 830 megs, so we have guaranteed, depending on how things get swapped out, but we've basically guaranteed that like half of memory should be zeroed out. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? Um, dramatic music intensifies, hell yeah. You don't get shit on this level from game hacking unless it's something novel, uh, DRM cracking, oh for sure. The look. Oh, God. What was the look? What was the... <laughs> okay, that's pretty fucking good. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. Um... Then isn't the memory copied in? We're not actually copying memory into there. So here's what we're doing. We are zeroing, we're zeroing out as much memory as we can in user space that will hopefully cause, and we don't have control over it, right? The kernel can do whatever it wants to do with our allocations, but our goal is to zero out as much memory as we can in user space, which will hopefully, at some lossy ratio, turn into zeroed out pages in physical memory. And if we get zeroed out pages in physical memory, then we can skip those pages entirely, which means that we can dramatically reduce the size of the, um, the we can dramatically reduce the size of the, uh, the stuff that we're doing, the, the amount of data that we have to store, which now means that we've pushed off most of the RAM. In this situation, We've pushed off 19 CB, and in total, there's like, uh, in this range, I guess if we do a ratio, um, I'm going to multiply this by a, a, thou uh, a thousand, so the bottom three sig figs, we're basically doing fixed point arithmetic here. We're going to do this, and then uh, memory size, um, we'll pull it into here. So determine the total size of physical memory. So this will give the um, uh, total size. This is basically the percentage where 1,000 is 100%. Um, I guess we can just do a percentage. Um, and this will hopefully, uh, not total size, memory size. This will tell us what percentage of memory we don't have to save at all because we know it's zero. Um, wouldn't compression like gzip work? I don't have access to gzip. So no. Uh, caret zero. 
Wait. Did I, did, did I, did I do math wrong? Um, oh, did I overflow? Um, I might have overflowed. 400, yeah, I probably overflowed. 400 megs times 100, yeah, that definitely is an overflow. Um... As U64 divided by this as U64. Um, the end result will fit in a U32. There we go. 85% of memory is zeroed. And that means 85% of memory we don't have to save at all, right? Isn't that cool? Um, Kamoza's brain from Pinky in the brain. <laughs> Except all of his is all of his experiments actually end up working, and he's only half evil. You don't know the other half. <laughs> um I like this new camera POV. Hell yeah. I like this angle a lot more. It's a little less intrusive for me. Um, you also get to see, like, keyboard typing, which I think is kind of cool. Um, you also get to see a little bit of outside and stuff, which is kind of neat. Why do you want to reduce the amount of memory you have to save? Uh, basically, we need to be able to copy all of memory into memory. And we can't copy all of memory into memory unless we reduce the amount of memory. Um... <laughs> so what we're trying to do is reduce the amount of memory to where half of memory is uh, not used. Because at that point, we can allocate the other half of memory and then copy half of memory into half of memory. Right? You just wanted to show off this battle station? Yeah, no shit. <laughs> no shit. You think I have all this stuff set up normally? No. Um... But yeah, that's effectively what we're trying to do. And we're doing some weird compression things. Um, here, do you wanna do you wanna do some uh, cool experiment? We're gonna fill everything in with four ones. And then this check is going to check if it contains all four ones. And now we're gonna see what percentage of that memory we zeroed. So it started at zero, right? Because nothing zeroed, and then 84, right? So it started off, there were no pages that were full of four ones. And then we ended up uh, filling a bunch of pages with 4.1. So 84% of physical memory, at least in that region of physical memory, we don't have all of physical memory, is full of 4.1s. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Isn't that nifty? So that kind of confirms basically our theory that we were actually zeroing out the memory. I was not expecting 84%. That is ridiculous. <laughs> that is absolutely nuts, and I love it. I'm so happy about it. Um, okay. So. Um, if. Uh, let page filled is equal to this. If page... If page is not filled, then we want to save it. Um, and we have a copy of that. So we're going to allocate room for, let's see if we can allocate, um, instead of doing the bucket stuff, uh, which I'm going to be really sad if I end up uh, having to add this code back in. Um, but I don't think I'm going to have to. I think we control enough of RAM that it's okay. Um, so I'm going to temporarily delete this. We're going to move uh, kmelic and kfree up at the top. Um, addresses for kernel malloc and free. And then here, uh, we're going to have the actual alloc and free. 
Uh, we can delete that code. Oops. And paste. Oops. Oh my god, I put those in my buffer like an idiot. Um, so what we want to do is we want to allocate um, memory size divided by um, enough room for what's 80%? A fifth? So uh, allocate room for one fifth of all physical memory. And I kind of doubt this allocation is going to be uh, satisfied. So we'll see here. Um, I mean, I could maybe copy directly into the pages that we filled with A's. Um, so, I don't know. Let's see if we can allocate one-fifth of RAM. Uh, 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 storage is equal to this, and then we'll say storage here is uh, to K-free, and we'll see how this goes. Uh, page filled if not page filled. Um, if it's not filled, uh, we don't care. And then zero plus equals page filled is that. Uh, as you 32. Am I building this release? Yes, I am. Okay. 84%. Um, oh, yeah, we have no idea if that allocation succeeded. Um, if not, if storage is zero, return uh, not zero. So, we'll see. Okay, yeah, we could not allocate that much memory. Um, I might be able to com um, copy it directly to user space. Um... The downside is we might end up filling in memory that is, we might, we, I'm concerned that we might end up filling in memory that, first of all, paging is a concern. Like, having things get paged out is definitely a concern there. Um, the other thing is basically uh, trying to figure out how we can... Um, If we end up filling things in, we lose our fill pattern, and I disabled interrupts. I could make a bitmap of things that are filled with our fill pattern. So if I made a fill pattern and filled everything in with that fill pattern, then what I could do is determine which pages contain the fill pattern, and I could only fill in pages that have the fill pattern because that's how I know I own those pages. There's a lot of ways that we can we can do this. I'm trying to figure out the easiest, most reliable way. Um, I know interrupts are not going to come through because we disabled interrupts. So if a page has our fill pattern in it, and um, then we know it's paged in, and we can safely copy directly to user land. And I kind of like that. So we could do one scan through physical memory to find what pages uh, belong to us. And we could fill them in. Now we need an index. We need something to tell us what the mappings are between them. Um... I mean, I can I can just root it and map lock it. What age am I? I'm 27. I guess yeah, I'm 27 now. I was 26 when I wrote that. Um, so we could root the phone and then try to uh, uh, m lock all, which would guarantee that the memory wouldn't get locked out. Um, but and then we can copy the pages directly in there. Um, we need to make an ignore bit mask, which we can, we're doing it. We're doing it. Let's go. Let's.
It's time. It's time. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to root the phone. Um, so we're going to uh, root the phone so we can lock the um, uh, so we can lock memory. <laughs> so that that'll give us root. Um, yay! We are now root. <laughs> Isn't that fucking cool? <laughs> we're root now. Woo! Um, and then we're just gonna call uh, mlock all. And I know you can't see this right now, uh, but we'll just say mlock all, and then flags that we want to pass. Um, we're gonna do current and future, um, and that might cause that allocation to fail. So right now, I should be able to allocate. Um, a gig, and I'm gonna do that by returning okay here. So basically, I'm gonna see if this f uh, succeeds or fails. This should succeed. Um, basically, we're going to uh, we're gonna root the phone, and then we're going to allocate a shit ton of memory and see if the allocation succeeds. And this allocation will likely succeed, and it did, right? The fact that that allocation succeeded um, means that. Uh, like, basically, paging is enabled. So hopefully, we're going to use mlockall as an oracle. And um, we're going to pass the uh, flags to mlockall, which is uh, current. Lock all pages which are currently mapped. And we're going to lock in future um, in there as well. Uh, and we're going to make sure this succeeds. I'm guessing it just returns zero on success, and it does. So assert this is equal to zero, right? So we're going to lock in all of our memory into uh, uh, physical memory. And this is probably going to uh, fail. This, this allocation will maybe fail? I'm not sure, actually. Or we're going to get killed. Like, this process will get deleted. <clears throat> Could call it to get root instead of get root shell. Yeah, I kind of agree with that. Um, I thought about that last time I saw that function. Killed. Nice. Did the phone reboot? Uh, okay, not quite. So the fact that that got killed and the other time it didn't means that paging is off, right? We have disabled paging. Um, okay, and the phone didn't reboot, but it soft rebooted because we killed um, T-Tors. Um, the phone uh, soft rebooted because we lost the system process. Okay. Right. So what we can do, um, since that got killed, that's a really good sign. Um, that means that memory was actually commit and filled in. Uh, we're going to fill it in with four ones. Um, and we're going to try 500 megs. And that succeeded. That just works that it worked once um yeah that works we can get 500 megs let's see if we can get 600 oh whoa i actually uh fully rebooted the device so i just panicked the kernel um shit happens <laughs> shit happens yikes Okay, so um, 600 megs we should be able to do. Should be just fine. Um, and hopefully 600 megs doesn't push the device too hard. I mean, honestly, we only need 500 megs. Wait. We're just fine as is. We don't need to do a lot of the fancy stuff I was thinking. We need half of RAM, and there is 800 megs of RAM, or whatever. So 500 is more than, uh, definitely more than half. So let's make sure this succeeds. It succeeds. The allocation passes. Okay. Now, 
Um, we can run this to determine uh, how much memory is zeroed out and all of that stuff, or filled with four ones. Um, in this case, we can just say OU8 there and then fill everything in. We're doing write volatile to make sure that memory actually gets written. Uh, KRET negative one. Um, and that's because this allocation is failing, and that's fine. We don't actually care about that allocation. We might have killed it. Okay, uh, we're all good. So this should now give the number of pages that are filled with four ones, right? 77% of, uh, or the percentage of, of pages. So 78% of physical pages are full of four ones. Um, now what we want to do is actually generate a uh, random um, fill pattern. So uh, fill pattern is going to be a U8, which is include bytes dot dot slash fill pattern dot bin. Uh, a pattern of random bytes for uh, 4096 bytes, which um, fills in a page to indicate ownership of it. Like, this is basically preventing us from having to walk page tables, but this is going to allow us to um, copy things directly into user space's buffer. Um, and that fill pattern is basically going to indicate uh, what memory can be skipped um, in physical memory. Um, if that makes sense, right? Basically, if something contains that pattern, we know it's a user space controlled allocation. So this should now fail to build. Good. Uh, fill pattern is going to be, um, so uh, ddif is dev u random, of is uh, fill pattern dot bin, block size is one, uh, 4096 counts as one. So we're gonna create a fill pattern file and then pull that in, and now we have a random sequence of bytes. And then we're gonna fill in all of this memory uh, for page in uh, data dot um, iter, uh, uh, data dot step by uh, 4,096. I, I do have to iter that. If that makes any sense, uh, I will have to iter, right? Yeah. And I'm going to do OU8 4096, and then just divide this by 4096, and then I just do uh, iter mute. And then we can do data copy our page, copy from slice, uh, fill pattern. And that's also going to assert that both sides are 4K exactly. Um... Uh, make run. Woof. So now all of that is filled in. We shouldn't see many things filled with A's. And then this is going to happen every time I build this. Um, so every time I make a change to this, uh, it will regenerate that fill pattern. So now we see no like basically nothing contains that pattern because we are not checking for this. Page filled is equal to... Um, Page is equal to fill pattern, right? This is poor man's uh, page table uh, parsing. So now we can check if it's identical. Um, oops. Hmm. Why would that be happening? This isn't 4K aligned. There's no way this isn't 4K aligned. But in theory, it's not necessarily 4K aligned. Um, struct page, uh, U8 4096, uh, repr C align 4096. Um, a four uh, kilobyte aligned page. Uh, 
Um, and derive clone and copy. 249, page.0.copy copy from slice. Unless that's getting um, optimized. Oh, there we go. Wow. Okay, sweet. Um, and then this is going to rebuild each time because that file is going to change each time and Rust is smart enough to know to rebuild it. So every time we run this, we're going to get a new pattern, a new random sequence, and we're going to refill memory. That's why it always starts out as zero. Um, the odds of a collision is fucking zero. Like, we don't have to worry about collisions. Like, in theory, it's possible. Um, in practice, it's never going to happen. Um, although technically, like, this fill pattern could be aligned to a page. Um... But that's actually okay, because if it's a line, basically, if the page contains the fill pattern, we skip recording that page. And it doesn't matter if it's in this area or somewhere else, because we don't care. We, like, actually kind of cool. Um, nice. Um, then we don't need K Malik and K Free which is uh, fewer addresses. We actually have no addresses in here, um, which is really, I mean, obviously the physical memory ranges, but we don't have like ASLR addresses, which makes this like a pretty portable way of doing a snapshot. Um, this is really cool. Um, this is really fucking cool. So um, let pages is equal to memory. Uh, if memory size is, um, less than or equal to zero, or it's not divisible uh, by zero. So this is um, make sure the memory ranges uh, ranges are for uh, kilobyte aligned. And um, I guess technically I could just validate everything here. Um, we're just going to say uh, for starts end in uh, pmem ranges um, if uh, let size is equal to n minus starts um, saturating sub uh, n minus start plus one. Technically incorrect in the plus one case if we saturate, but that's fine. Um, if size is uh, less than or equal to zero, if or uh, size mod 4096 is not equal to zero, return not zero. So this is, um, validates all ranges are uh, four kilobyte aligned, right? And then here we can say, um, start, uh, mod 4096 is zero, is not equal to zero, or this. So if the start is not 4K aligned, or the size is zero, or the size is not 4K divisible, then uh, it's a bad range, right? So then we can take memory size and divide it by 4096, uh, determine the number of pages. Um, uh, 298. Okay, um, ref. So, and saturating sub start, uh, if start mod 4096 is not zero, or the size is less than equal to zero, or that's not divisible by 4096, then get mad. Okay. Obviously, that hasn't affected anything. That's just really pedantic, right? And that's how I typically write code. I write my code very verbose. Um, we supply those ranges, right? We control whether or not this is valid. Um, this will get completely deleted by the compiler. The compiler will be able to const prop this and just completely delete this. Um, so we don't even care. Um, we're relying on the compiler to optimize that out. And even if it didn't, we don't really give a shit. Okay, so now um, we determined the total number of pages on the system. And uh, I'm just going to return pages temporarily just so I can get a ballpark as what that number is. Um, this is total number of pages, uh, 122880. Um, 
So if we were to uh, 1 to 2, 880 divided by 8 bits, uh, basically we need a 15 kilobyte region to store a bit mask of whether or not something is to be skipped. So we're going to do an initial pass and determine which things we can skip, and then we'll do a secondary pass where we'll actually do the copies of the data. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to do is make that bit mask, and to make that bit mask, uh, we need a 15k of storage. And, um... Let's just, uh... Unfortunately, I think we're gonna have to use a global here. Bitcode was seven months, thank you so much. The legend, the legend indeed, hell yeah. Uh, isn't size always at least one? Yeah, 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 we're being hyper pedantic. Make it 16384, I'm probably gonna do 32K. Uh, we're just gonna pre-allocate here. So uh, this is going to be um, lock all current and future memory to make sure no memory in this process can get swapped out to disk, right? So I'll lock everything in. And now we're going to do some globals. Because keep in mind, we haven't added this final region, which we don't know if we can use yet, but whatever. Um, uh, static. Uh, mute. Ah. Um, data, atomic pointer is equal to atomic pointer new uh, standard uh, null mute. And this is going to be the um, user uh, pmem buff, right? Uh, const user pmem buff len. And it's going to look kind of like C, because that's effectively what we're doing. And we'll just say 512. Make that a nice round number. Obviously, we're going to need to pull an atomic pointer. Um, then we're going to have uh, this. Um, and this is a 4 uh, kilobyte aligns. Oh, yeah, and we need to type on this uh, page. Uh, four kilobyte aligned um, allocation of this bytes, which, um, hmm, this pages, um, which uh, will hold the uh, raw contents of pages. I mean, technically, it doesn't have to, uh, well, we do want it page aligned so we know to skip this stuff. Okay. Um, the size in bytes, uh, in pages, mm, pages, uh, the size in pages, um, of the, uh, user pmem buff. Okay. Static. Um, we're going to have, uh, Smooth Hacker! Love the streams! Really need to learn Rust? Absolutely, it's a great language. Um, thank you so much for the three months, Smooth Hacker. That's fantastic. We've got so many fucking subs now. It's insane. Absolutely fucking insane. Um, then we're gonna have a... Size in pages of the buff. We're gonna have a static, which is the, um... Um page skip bitmap. This is an atomic pointer to, uh, we'll use U8s. Um, this is a, uh, pointer to a, uh, allocation of, uh, hmm. A pointer to an allocation of, uh, that, that, uh, journal. I mean, honestly, I can just k malloc that region. Eh, fuck it. I like having this in a, in a global, um, because I might actually use this in an interesting way when I get this information back. So a pointer to an allocation of, uh, general purpose memory, uh, if, what am I doing? A pointer to an allocation of, uh, page... 
skip bitmap size uh, bytes, which can hold um, pointer to an allocation of page skip bitmap size bytes, which can hold, uh, which not can hold, which holds the bitmap of physical pages, which are to be skipped during the um, uh, physical uh, memory copy due to being uh, part of user pmem buff, if that makes sense. Cons page uh, skip bitmap size, u size is, I mean, it doesn't really matter. We can go like pretty large with this, right? Um, a bit, uh, the size in bytes of this. Okay, so we're gonna allocate this many pages in here. So this is um, allocates the uh, uh, user pmem buff. Okay, uh, fill in the pages with the fill uh, pattern such that we can detect what pages belong to this allocation so we can skip um, them during the uh, uh, physical memory copy, right? So and that's doing that. Uh, we don't need that right now. Uh, do we? Was that doing anything important? No, it wasn't. Um, okay, so run as kernel. Uh, we'll print the kret result here, and that will fill it in. And then we're going to do a... Uh, we have to now store this. Um, this dot st uh, store um, data dot leak ordering sequentially consistent. Uh, store the pointer to this buffer in a global. And leaking it is going to relinquish our access of it and also make sure that the uh, drop will not get... Uh, called on it so it won't get freed. Use standard sync atomic atomic pointer and uh, ordering. So this is going to basically uh, give us access to those things. Okay. 282. Uh, leak expected page. Uh, that's fine. Um, as mute pointer. Okay. So now... We've stored that, and the next thing we want to do is make this page skip bitmap. So we'll do page skip bitmap, um, and this we can probably do in a one-liner. Dot store uh, vec ou8 for uh, page skip bitmap size. Uh, dot leak as mute pointer ordering sequentially consistent. So all we're doing um, is we're saving. And this is uh, creates the page skip bitmap. So we're basically creating allocations for the kernel to store that information. Um, and that should succeed. Everything looks fantastic uh, there. Cool. So then we're going to say if pages is less than, um, or if pages is greater than the page skip bitmap divided by 8, return not 0. And this is uh, make sure we have enough bits in the page skip bitmap to hold the um, uh, to hold the uh, bitmap. <laughs> so basically, uh, divide that by eight to determine how many pages. Uh, actually, multiply this by eight. So. This is in bytes, we convert it to bits. If the number of pages is greater than the number of bits in this, then we fail. Now, we're not gonna fail there because we definitely have enough space. Now, what this means we can do is we can uh, go through all of physical memory and determine if we need to save the page or not. So, interrupts are disabled, so we don't have to worry about anything coming in and fucking things up. So this is um, get the uh, virtual address, the kernel virtual address, uh, corresponding to this uh, physical address. Convert the uh, 
um, pointer into a Rust slice, and then I check if this page is filled. Okay, so determine the alignment of the physical range. We don't need to do that anymore. Um, get the size of the physical page or physical range. Uh, n minus star plus one. We know that doesn't overflow. If it did, then that would saturate and that would return an error. So get the size. Go through uh, each of the pages. Get the page. Convert it to a pointer. Determine if it's uh, filled with this fill pattern. Um, if let filled is equal to this uh, with our magical fill pattern. Okay, then we're going to, we need like a page counter. Um, let mute page ID is equal to 0U32. Um, page ID plus equals 1. Uh, and then we can do pages. Um, what are we doing here? Uh, we need to get access, uh, get the uh, page skip bitmap. Let's uh, uh, page skip bitmap is equal to uh, core slice from raw parts mute. Yeah, mute. Um, page skip bitmap dot load ordering sequentially consistent. Um, I'm not gonna null check that. Uh, page skip bitmap size. We can do this. I like this a little bit more. I like uh, using constants as soon as I can, and then uh, basically the, the sooner you use constants, then I can start using the dot len, and it kind of makes a little bit more sense what's going on. So then we can do um, page skip bitmap, uh, page ID divided by eight, or equals uh, one shift page ID mod eight. So basically fill in the bits. Um, increments the page ID counter. Okay. Um, filled as U8. Uh-huh. Uh, fine, U size. Makes more sense anyways. Uh, so divide that by eight, that gets the bytes, then or in whether or not it is filled with our fill pattern. And it's a page skip bitmap. Um, so we're going to say if it's not filled. Or actually, it is a skip bitmap. <laughs> so if, it's, if it is filled, then we do want to skip it. OK. All right. So now uh, we have that bitmap. So I can go through uh, for page ID in 0 to page ID. Um, uh, uh, let mute filled is equal to zero. We're just going to make a counter here. Um, and we're going to say uh, filled plus equals um, page skip bitmap. I'm just like double checking my work here. This is pretty redundant in what we're doing right now. Divided by eight, um, shift by uh, page ID mod eight. Um, and one is one. <laughs> uh, we probably could have done this in a better way as you size. Anyways, that's going to return the number of pages that have been filled in, um, as you 32. <laughs> kind of unnecessary to do that, but whatever. This is basically the number of pages that we can skip. And it's, uh, and this number should probably vary between runs. Which would be, I mean, it's not a big deal if it doesn't. Um, yeah, it does. Okay, sweet. So basically, we now have a bitmap of the things we can skip. So we're going to go through all of memory again. And um, now 
for pages we don't want to skip, um, uh, serialize their contents to the um, serialize their contents to the uh, user pmem buff, right? So we're now gonna serialize that memory out. Uh, get the size, blah blah blah, for page in this, and uh, page ID. Yeah, I don't have a great way to do this, but uh, page ID plus equals one. So uh, let filled is equal to uh, page skip bitmap page ID mod eight. Um. Shift by one mod um, uh, page ID mod eight, right? So that's going to determine uh, if it's filled. And we just did this. Let me say and one. If it's equal to one, then this is a skip page. If not skip page, then uh, filled plus equals one, right? Um, let me, filled is zero. So now this is going to print the number of pages that we would save. So, uh, go through each page in this region. Just going to clean up some comments here. Um, perfect. So 25,000 pages we need to record. So this is going to, um, uh, determine if we can skip recording this page. And then this is, uh, basically, that's going to actually fill things in to that memory, which is pretty cool. Um, I do want to return filled. I do want that indicator. So now what we want to do is um, we want to get the, uh, the page whatever thing, uh, pmem buff, yeah? So this is going to be the pmem buff uh, as const u8, or as mute u8. So we're gonna cast that, and then uh, this is gonna be pmem buff pages. Uh, or multiply this by 4096, so we're gonna cast it into u8, but that's totally fine. Get the page skip bitmap. Uh, it's not the page skip bitmap, so uh, get the pmem buffer. Okay. Um, I was trying to figure out what that sound was. I was like, what the fuck made that noise? It was the shutter. <laughs> it was the shutter on the camera. Um... Determine if we can skip it. If we cannot skip recording this page, then we are going to um, p uh, pmem uh, pointer is equal to mutable reference to pmem buff. Mm -hmm. Am I not using size for either of these? No. Uh, then we're going to do pmem pointer is equal to mute pmem pointer. Uh, I think we can do this. I'm just going to make sure. I can't. Oh, um, mute this. Okay, so uh, previously in Rust you couldn't do that, but uh, recently they had. I think uh, non-lexical lifetimes made that possible. So what we're going to do is serialize out our page, um, and it's 4 plus 4096. And this is uh, advance the uh, serialization pointer. Uh, if let sum, if let sum uh, data is equal to pmem pointer get uh, 4 plus 4096. So we're going to make room. Uh, we're going to see if we have room in the pmem pointer for uh, a 4K page plus a 4 byte. Um, I mean, we can be more explicit and say size. Uh, we're going to say four. Uh, we're, it, we're writing an exploit for a very specific phone. Um, data uh, copy from slice. Um, 
we'll say four dot dot copy from slice and then we need to uh, get access to this page so if we cannot skip this page then we want to get a slice into this page uh, text width is 79 do that and get this page um, uh, make sure we have room for this um, in our uh, pmem uh, buffer uh, copy from slice page right both of those should be 4k otherwise return not zero um, out of space for uh, physical memory storage right so basically if we get to that uh, that's the end we failed um, advance the serialization pointer here. We are going to just advance that, and this should now be copying that, and we can say data dot dot for um, copy from slice, and here we can say page as um, uh, to uh, native Indian bytes. And you know, we'll even say to little Indian bytes such that we can serialize this in a generic way. Um, and then this is going to return the number of bytes serialized, which will be pmem pointer.len minus pmem buff.len, uh, technically the other way. So uh, this is the uh, number of bytes that were consumed. pmem buff.len minus that.len is the difference between the two, which is the, the number of bytes which have been consumed and thus have been serialized. So we're basically serializing all of RAM into that memory. Okay. Um, not found on U8. Yeah, it's not page. Oh, it. Uh, I shadowed that pretty hard, didn't I? Page adder. Um, page adder. Okay. Um, and then a ref on that. We got there. Uh, uh, get mute. I was worried about this. Um, uh, PMP L is equal to uh, PMM pointer dot len. We're gonna have to do this quick. So hopefully that's the number of bytes that got serialized into that buffer. Um, if you're storing the size anyway, would it make sense storing offsets separately instead of inline? Replace bits with offsets? Oh, storing the address? Oh, I, I, I like this a lot more. It's much easier to parse. <clears throat> it's much easier to parse when it's inline. I mean, we won't be able to map it in, but we can, we can uh, post-process it. But this format is much easier to uh, process. Um, and we also don't this, know this mapping information, right? This is local to this function. So we actually can't convert that bitmap into uh, that information. Like, literally, we don't know what addresses things are at. Um, okay. So basically, we have 90 megs here that we're storing. Um... Okay. Do you do trading on the side? I do, but that's not what the monitors are for. There's no internet on those that computer. Um. So uh, I guess we're not using filled anymore, are we? There. Okay. Um, sweet. Oh, I like this quite a bit. So that should have dumped all of memory. And 
We have register states. Uh, let's go get the... Um, hmm. So one of the biggest issues is we don't know all of this RAM. Like, we don't know if it's all mapped. Uh, I'm just going to see if this fails. It's just going to crash, pretty sure. Yeah. Um, I don't know why that's not mapped in. So hopefully the physical memory, the physical memory map is probably within this small uh, first range. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a register for the uh, TTBR. Um, ARM TTBR zero. Is that uh, ARM 64? Uh, ARM V6. I think this is actually ARM V7. Um, is it TTBR0? Uh... Okay, so we have the ARM v7 ARM. Oh, this is M. That's not going to have it. Um, ARM uh, v7 uh, A ARM. The ARM ARM. Uh, ARM reference manual. Hopefully I can just find a copy of it. That's ARM M. Um... Honestly, OSDev might just have the thing. Arm arm. Here we go. I'm going to have to log into this shit. I don't think I remember my creds for arm. No, I need the PDF. I don't want the... F there we go. Yes. Save. Uh, we'll probably be referencing this more, so we'll uh, we'll save this. I don't know. Um, we'll save this actually in the uh, Android folder. I like that. Uh, file colon slash home pleb um, Android. Okay. V7A, TTBR0. I don't know if it's called TTBR0 in ARM V7. Um, yes. Uh, large physical address extension. Okay, so there is a thing. Uh, TTBR0, translation table base address 0. Um, and this is basically, it, it's the, um, it's the address, it's the physical address of the start of the page table. Um, so what we're going to do is TTBR... Where's the fucking... What is the, um... What's the, uh... Here we go. There we go. Accessing it. That's exactly what I wanted. Sweet. I didn't even have to think about it. Nice! Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to save the uh, TTBR0 and all of those fun things in our shellcode here. So rept18 now. Um, we're going to have to load this into R0, but that's okay at this point. Uh, MRC. Um, get TTBR0. We're going to store uh, R0 to registers plus hex 40, and then get TTBR1. Forty-four, um, comma, and then let's see, uh, TTBR1 is probably directly after this. Um, the last thing turns into a one. That's it. Everything else is the same. Uh, uh, 15, 0, RT, C2, MRC. Okay. So basically, we're getting the uh, physical bases for the uh, translation tables, and we made room for those in the register banks. 
uh, which is good. And then um, 16. So, ah, I kind of wish I saved that code. But anyways, we're going to do uh, um, unsafe uh, deref implant trampoline trampoline as pointer uh, as const u32 for 18 now. Um, let registers is equal to this. Oops. Registers uh, prints this registers. Red, red, red. Registers. Registers. Okay. Uh, 297. Yeah, I forgot that last time. Um, this is going to print the registers that we dumped. And they should be, like, low addresses, right? They should be physical addresses. Oh, um, should hopefully do the trick. The first time takes a while because we're evicting a lot of shit from memory. That mlock all is pretty brutal. There we go. So... TTPR is... what? Oh, um, trampoline, um, offset, uh, uh, we won't do that. Um, it's at offset eight, right? Zero, four, and then that's at eight. So these registers are at eight. Um, <laughs> got it. Oh, yeah, and I'm going to do eight, uh, and then we'll do 18 times four. We're just going to make sure that that memory exists before we do the cast. Um, I kind of like that a bit. So it just it makes sure that trampoline actually has enough data for that. It makes me a little happier with that. OK, so we have a 27CF. And that is in this range. So 27CF is in this range. And that's TTBR0. And then P TTBR1 is at f uh, 404A. So uh, these bottom bits uh, indicate information uh, that we can look in the arm arm. So bits 4a, uh, if we look, um, oh yeah, this is not like super readable for y'all, is it? Um, we'll do uh, exits. Um, here we go. Bink. So we have this address. TTBR1 is the kernel one, if I'm not mistaken. Um, Python bin. So we're going to get the binary representation of this. Uh, if we were to look at 4,000 right here, uh, C000 4,000. Oh, it just doesn't even show. But that's, um, ooh, KL Sims might, our system map will have it. Um, I guess I don't have that system map. Uh, and KL Sims won't have that. Anyways, it makes sense that that address is very low um, because it's one of the first things that has to get set up. It's the base address of translation table one and information about the memory it occupies. Uh, stage one translation, only accessible from PL1 or higher. So basically, these bottom bits in here, zero, uh, is so we're looking at this is the C bit. Um, actually, this is for the multiprocessing extensions. Uh, I'm guessing those are ignored. Um, then 0, then bit 4 is set. Uh, it's actually 0 and 1 is RGN. So RGN, TTBR0, uh, RGN of 0, 1 means it's normal memory with write back, write allocate cacheable. Um, so this is basically the most cacheable memory that you can have. So this is telling me that this memory is mapped in uh, as cacheable. Um, and yeah, it's basically about as cacheable as you can get. Um, then we have the next bit, uh, which is the NOS bit. Uh, not outer shareable, that's not set. Um, and then the next bit is another ignored bit. So... I think. <laughs> I th I think. 
uh, bit zero in the, uh, for an implementation that includes that. Or maybe it's implementation specific. I don't. I don't know. I don't give a shit. Um. Anyways, this is basically giving me the physical address of uh, the TTBR zero and the TTBR one. So the TTBR zero, this is going to be the user space page table, and it makes sense that it's late in memory. And when I say late in memory, I mean deeper into physical memory because this process didn't exist until I just ran it, right? So it created this page table pretty far into the future, so it gets a pretty high address. The other one, TTBR1, is the kernel one. Obviously, the kernel has had a page table uh, since pretty early in the kernel. It's one of the first things it allocates, uh, which is exactly that. That's what we're seeing here. Isn't that cool? Um, any reason you're not using print line? It's just more verbose. Um, it also makes my output the same on Windows and Linux. Um, if you ever pipe output and write strict parsers, um, you get different output on Windows and Linux. So also stuff like that is nice. Okay. Um, nice. So I have RAID. Uh, I have AQ40, uh, which we can either... Uh, you can either join me for AQ40. Um... Or I can fuck off for a few hours. So let's see here. Just making sure I'm muted. Um, I think we just have someone's going out now. So we raid in uh, in like 15 minutes. Uh, so I'm just going to get WoW open, make sure I can get my summon, make sure I get into the instance and all of that good stuff. Okay. I'm going to log on on Ono in like five seconds. I can put this on here quick. Um, let me make sure my mic set up correctly on this. I think it is. Um, Check. Okay, yeah, sorry, I fixed it. Um, basically, that happens when I start Discord um, because Discord tries to set the volume to a ridiculous level and there's no way to stop it. <laughs> so, I, I hate that shit. Check. Yeah, okay. Absolute piece of shit. I hate, I don't think applications should have the ability to control your volume. I like... That makes no sense to me, that it can just globally control uh, volume like that. I feel like that shouldn't be allowed. Um. Anyone need anything from org before I leave? I'll have two number nine large. <laughs> Hell yeah. We'll uh we'll see. We'll uh nice. Okay. Um fucking world buffs. I hate world buffs. Okay, so what we can do is now we can write a parser in user land um, that will hopefully allow us to uh, basically reconstruct these page tables. So uh, how are these page tables structured? So TTBR1, I forget how this shit works. It's, 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 been, a, it's been a long time. Give me, give me, give me some fucking space. Um... 
Um, let's see. Uh, let's see how this is done. Virtual memory system architecture. Um, translation tables. Here we go. This is all I care about. Uh, I killed it. I killed it. The phone died. Shit. <laughs> um, okay, nice. So, um, So what we want to do is basically figure out how these work. Uh, up to two levels of Adif lookup. This is the original format, um, and it's the only format specified by these that don't have a uh, large physical address extension. So as someone asked earlier about large physical addresses, they do exist on ARM, um, but we'll have to figure out kind of how those work. And then 32-bit input addresses, output of blah. Um, okay, so basically there are different translation tables, um, and I can't remember if a bit factors in, and I think the C range, or like, I, hmm. Uh, so TTBR0 is... Uh, can be configured to describe the translation of VAs for the entire address map or to describe the VAs for the lower part of the address map. So it's probably being used for the lower part because we see that address. TTBR1 is configured to describe the translation of VAs in the upper part of the address map. Um, so I guess technically we don't know which mode is being used. Um, so... I mean, the kernel will be mapped in in TTBR0, so we're just going to parse TTBR0. Um, and to do this, we're going to need to write something that will like parse our uh, data structure and kind of just put all of memory into that blob. Let's see. I'm trying to re listen to Discord at the same time. So I hope I'm probably losing my train of thought a little bit more. Uh, secure and non-secure. Don't care about any of this stuff. I just care about these formats. Um, so super sections, ah, yes. So basically ARM has like skip levels where you're able to have like larger pages that kind of um, define larger chunks. So the first level table holds first level descriptors. I'm guessing it's a page in size. And let's look, okay, uh, here's the table we care about. TTBR0 points to this first level table. This is indexed by the top um, 31 minus N. Uh, when using TTBR1, N is 0. So the top 8 bits. Uh, okay. When using... Uh, wait. When using TTBR1, N is 0. Yep. And when using TTBR0, 0, 0 less than equal N is less than 8. Do I know? Uh, does that... How do I know what N is? How do I know what n is? Is that configured? See text for more information. Okay, okay. Text. Where's the text? Um, blah 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 blah. Uh, short level, first level table. Um. So the, here's a page table entry. So at uh, 4,000 hex. So basically, I'm going to save this out to a file. We're going to reload this and kind of convert it into a single memory thing, or a, a linear thing in memory, such that we can parse uh, this physical memory in a nice way. So I'm actually not going to do leak here, because I don't have to. Uh, this user pmem buff. We can just do as mute pointer, and then when we get back uh, after doing all this stuff, center fs writes uh, data local temp uh, snapshot dot bin uh, snapshot dot pmem, uh, and then we'll write out data um, 
KRED. Right, so we're going to write out all of the bytes that were serialized. Um, okay, so we're going to basically write everything out to disk such that we can pull that down, uh, 302. Um, oh, yeah, those are marked as pages. Fuck. Um, um, I mean, I'm just going to have to cast it here. Um, I hate this, but uh, we're just going to do this. Uh, core slice from raw parts, and then we'll do um, data as a pointer, and then kret as u size. So this is um, get a slice to the serialized bytes, and we need a dot zero on this. Serialized bytes, okay. I mean, technically I could iterate through that and just write it out in chunks, but whatever. Um, Uh, data. Okay, yep. Because uh, it's a vector of pages. And then here, pmem bytes. Oh, uh, as const u8. And then krets. Okay. You can put a little question mark on that. Now we'll actually free that memory. <laughs> Okay. No, we're just waiting for this. <laughs> we have interrupts disabled for a long time. But luckily, we don't care about whether or not the phone crashes in a bit. We just care about if we get one uh, good... Um, um, uh, Basically, uh, we're just waiting for this to finish up, but everything's looking good here. Okay. Um, is there a good way to learn about this? Yeah, my YouTube. Okay. So now we can do ADB poll, uh, data local temp, uh, snapshot.pmem. Uh, honestly, I'm going to... Oh, holy shit. That's going to take a while. I'm going to... Um, Uh, let mute output is equal to uh, buff writer new uh, file creates uh, data local temp. Ugh. Tape doors. Um, snapshot dot pmem. So we're going to serialize out uh, the registers as well, and we can get rid of this then. Ah, uh, not really. Um, it's just because we do it in a stupid way. And then we're going to call this uh, uh, a, f a fault core. Um, we're going to need to pull all those in. Uh, use standard FS, uh, standard IO, uh, buff writer and writes. And then we'll do uh, output dot write uh, pmem bytes, and then uh, for reg in registers uh, output dot write um, le. Am I using le bytes? I am. Okay, sweet. Outputs dot output dot write um, ref uh, reg dot two le bytes. So we're basically uh, going to serialize all of the registers, all eighteen registers that we're currently storing. And then we will serialize the um, uh, physical memory right after there. And we'll put some question marks on that, too. OK. So this is now uh, basically a snapshot that has, well, we don't know about that remaining part of physical memory. And we're going to basically figure out what's mapped in there. And uh, close your blinds. 
<laughs> I never close my blinds. <clears throat> um, if someone can see me through those windows, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> TLDR. There's a, some something not great is is gonna be happening. <laughs> Okay, and that's been saved. Okay, I just got the login call. Uh, I'm gonna move this to this monitor temporarily. Okay. Um, yeah, we're about to run into the instance. <laughs> okay, so uh, we pulled down that fault core. Um, and let me switch to my PVP gear. So if I do XXD on, um, uh, let's get rid of that. XXD on snapshot.faultcore vim dash. Um, this should have, uh, we'll switch it to the more visible side. Uh, this should effectively have, <laughs> Well, if it loads, um, we have the registers at the start, and then we should have things that resemble uh, physical memory in here. So things are going to be aligned in kind of a weird way, but that's okay. But this is a bunch of physical memory. So we should be able to see strings and secrets and more secrets and all sorts of stuff, right? Because this is basically the entirety of physical memory dumped out. So if we do strings on snapshot.fault core, you'll see we have plenty of stuff. We have things from user space. We have things from kernel space. Um, we've, we're going to have a bunch of stuff in here. So uh, we're about to start running into the instance. <laughs> God, I have only an hour and a half on my Sage. Yeah, but this is gonna be a wild stream for the next couple hours. So feel free to ask questions. I'll try to answer questions. Um, but unfortunately, this is going to be uh, a wow for probably uh, three hours. Um, so I can either end the stream here or we can just hang out and just kind of go to fewer viewers. Um, <laughs> 